Oh, we've got a disco music, Dan. We've got a disco music. So, Astralis versus Fnatic in a best of three. We have 15 seconds left on the clock before we kick this one off. Fnatic will want to be uh, dictating the pace, as you said, Dan, and just imposing their will. We'll see if Astralis are able to stop them. They are a team who are quite well versed on overpass. It is the a choice of Astralis. So we'll see what they have to offer on their CT side. Obviously, Device is uh, quite notorious for how dangerous he is on this map. Picking up the AWP, dedicated, at, dedicated to that now. We'll see if he can put a stop to JW and his team shenanigans. All right, here we go. The pistol round is about to start. And what do we see, James? We've already got a few grenades there on Flasher. And Molotov, a couple of flashbangs. And, uh, well, we might have, <laughs> I think, a technical oh. pause already. There's a, a timeout that we saw well. being called there. But either way, things will kick off for at least the first round. So we see Astralis with numbers towards the toilets area. They're playing deep at the moment, looking to see what Fnatic have to offer. They have the option for a fast flank if the T's are to move into B. But for, mo for the most part, we see Fnatic taking over the party area. Device is caught rotating, but he's going to shoot Olaf Meister straight in the face. Can Dennis come in for a bit of a trade here? No, the CT's going to move back now and play on their advantage. Yeah, I think Fluster actually spotted that there wasn't much going on in B, but now he's going to fall back. It's going to be smoked off by the CTs as well, who are playing uh, retake on B, which is a pretty standard way to approach this one on this map. It's much, much harder to retake into the A bomb site, and you can see now Device could get some nice taps here with the USP as the Fnatic players start to shuffle on over. All four players showing themselves. Device just look at that sidestep, the tap, so calm. Another one for Device looking for the third. There is JW, last man standing here for the Swedish side, and Carrigan will silence him with that Glock. First round will go to the Danes. Very nice play by the CTs. And they had a good help from Zipex, even though he was on the B site because he was in the short B area. And that gives you uh, audio, it, that allows you to hear the, C, the T's if they're running along the toilet. So I was watching his perspective on our third computer here. And uh, he was definitely feeding information to his team, allowed them to stack the A site and they the shut them down. Area, and that gives you uh, audio, it, that allows you to hear the, C, the T's if they're running along the toilet. So I was watching so his perspective a, on our yeah. third computer here. <laughs> and uh, he was definitely feeding information to his team, allowed them to stack the A site. The reason for that? Down. I can hear myself, Dan. I can hear myself too. I wasn't going to try and cast while that was going on. <laughs> so I would have been speaking in French. There is a, a chap with a big orange device sign in the crowds. We need some more cheerleading from him, though. Over there. Where's the cheerleading at? Come on. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. We got Dev and Ice. Hopefully, it becomes device a bit later on. You know, Maybe we can get that man some tape and he can make it one name instead of two. Nice. Well. One player you know, we just saw a shot of there, JW. I'm looking to see some big things from him. He's one of the, the, t the uh, players that can really throw a really good, stable team like Astralis just off, off the mark because he's so crazy, James. He does complete madness. It's complete madness with JW. But Dan, this like, uh, will have the shotgun out of Olofmeister. Big Popper Pump is Indeed. in play. Making his way through Connector, but nobody's going to be playing the close quarters with the uh, Fnatic players in the Connector. Olofmeister's going to be searching for a friend, but uh, nobody's swiping left at. Absolutely not. And uh, I think they've got control of quite a lot of the map at the moment. It's pretty quickly, too. I mean, Astralis realize what's up. They're going to play the Rangers. As they know, there's uh, very likely going to be some Tech 9s and some pistols in place. So they want to make sure they can use the advantage of those rifles. And uh, they don't really care too much about having a warning as to which site it's going to be. Here we go, starting to see some, uh, some nades. Get thrown here. Dupree trying to get some info by the toilets, but he can't spot too much just yet. Speaking of info, Flush has made his way into the B bomb site, trying to get a bit of a deagle engagement there, but he's going to back off and rotate, maybe trying to bait the CTs to move into B as his team seem to be headed towards A. There isn't much info on the Astralis team in terms of B at the moment because they're not playing short B, obviously, not wanting to uh, make those pistols stronger by closing the distance. Speaking of closing the distance, Fnatic are slowly emerging through the toilets then. Yeah, and Astralis have three players on the site, so this should be a pretty decent defense for Astralis if they can uh, use those rifles. Well, they're actually pretty much out of grenades. They've only got a couple flashbangs left, so they're going to have to do it with the raw aim battles, generally speaking. And all of Meister with that shotgun. I'm not sure if he's going to really get any good engagement. We'll have to see as now we start to have a few altercations as the assault has commenced into the A-bomb site. Device opens up with the first defensive frag, but they're getting really close here. A bit too close for comfort, but KGB and Device are going to send them packing. Just flush with the Deagle for a bit of damage right at the end. But two frags going the way of Fnatic. That's something that Astralis are okay with. Absolutely. 
the uh, MP9 gets swapped out for a fallen M4. So there's not much money lost for the Astralis side just yet. So far, so good on the CT side. Fnatic with around $2,000 in the bank are going to be on an eco. I think they will have not much to offer other than Glocks in this round. Perhaps a bit of money will be spent on the flashbang to try and get a plant. Flash has gone for a piece of 50. Other than that, they're going to leave. Spawn, so we can't expect much from them in this round. Bomb is not going to be rushing towards B. In fact, it's going over towards the slide area. So they're a bit spread out. We've got Flusher quickly taking short B. Again, Astralis playing the anti-eco strategy. It's going to be as far away from these players as they can to abuse their rifles. And Device is going to be trying to make some paper in the, the well, the underparts area, but that's actually not going to work out. Somehow JW gets a kill there. Just a Glock. Pretty insane. And uh, Dupree going to spot a couple of players here towards the toilets. Trying to go for the challenge here, but Dupree is on point. Wow, sending JW straight down the stairs from where he came. Uh, it's just Flusher left over. He's able to get a sneaky frag there. Almost another one as well. That's pretty... Pretty dangerous right there, but uh, Astralis will survive the round, losing only two players in the end. All the headshots. Closed casket funerals for Fnatic in that round. Perhaps Device uh, got a bit greedy there, pushing on an eco. We saw what can happen with that with Dozier on Mirage, and uh, fortunately for his team, there was not that much damage done. Device, of course, going to the AWP now. JW will have an AWP as well, but he doesn't have any armor. He's running around naked, Dan. Uh, I'm quite curious on how his timing is going to work out. Or is he just going to be holding some angles initially? Um, looks like he's going to go down into the underpass area towards that connector. Scope up there. Look at this push, though, coming in from Astralis. Really aggressive here. Three men all with their attention deep towards the party area and uh, the playground. And then falling back. So they gained a lot of info early in the round, but they did expend quite a few grenades. And as we I see this. Fnatic can go straight for the B push. No messing around. Straight into the bomb site. And this is going to be pretty tough to hold if Fnatic's shots are on point right now. But Cajun B still by the barrels. He doesn't mean Molotov the way. They have to try to get past him somehow. The smoke, the team smoke, is going to help him get out of position. And Fnatic still aren't really on the bomb site. They're still not on a plant. There's four players from Astralis ready to defend on this area now. There's still no frags for the Fnatic side. JW's holding the flank through connector. Device is moving back to CT spawn. So. The site has been split in half and Fnatic have lost two men, which means JW can't afford to hold the angle anymore. He's got to come in and try and support his team with the AWP as well. Perhaps he can get something done here, but Astralis still holding formation. They're almost in their Zipex special in the CT side of the water. Just waiting and waiting and starting to rotate away from B just in case there's a plant coming on A, but indeed Flash is going to get a plant on the smoke unless Carrigan can stop him. No, he's going to get a plant down to 8 HP and he gets a frag onto Carrigan. Lots of uh, trades coming in now, but they're all going the way of Astralis. JW's only man remaining, and it looks like he might try and uh, save his AWP. We'll have to see if he's going to try and do what he can to save. No Diffuse coming in just yet, and indeed he's going to hold the angle. Down goes the bite. seemingly has no idea where JW was. No nade for the CT flash. There's only one remaining Zipex. Can JW clutch his for his team? It's really awkward for Zipex, but JW's got to go for a fast crash pick. Misses a shot, that could have gone either way. Astralis will hold. What a beast JW is, man. That's that is what we're talking about right there. Those shots are on point. Going for the no scope right at the end, so close, almost picking that one up. But the damage that, that they accrued, and if you look at the position that the team was in, for GW to have to, to try to clutch it in this way, man, Fnatic did not have a good start to that push, to be honest. I mean, there weren't many grenades being used either. They really struggled getting in there, but JW, he made that worth it. He got, he secured the bomb plant for the team uh, with Flusher, and he got an extra three or four kills out of it. So Astralis' money now is really on the ropes. Going back to the beginning of that round, um, the CT threw a smoke which goes to the CT side of Monster and all of my just walked to it and dropped a flashbang, which is something I've mentioned about. That's so abusable, the smoke in that position. And uh, he managed to flash both plays, but again, they got no frags, so it was a nice hold for Astralis. There were no frags for either side for such a long time. Not very often you see that. So Zipex has taken a bit of damage. Now down, he's down to uh, 70 HP. Lots of nades remaining on the Astralis side. He's going to be doing a bit of wall banging towards the connector position at the moment. Yeah, a big problem for Fnatic is they don't really have any grenades. They've got two grenades left on Flusher, that's it. Oh no, sorry, there's a, a smoke on JW as well. And uh, the cool thing with the damage that JW did in the last round is that actually if Fnatic win this round, then Astralis have to save already, which is a really big deal. So let's see what Fnatic create to try to do that. Again, not much utility. They're going to have to get it done with the rifles, just the pure shots. 
And you can see they're starting to put some pressure in towards the B bomb somewhere right now. Astralis not overreacting, not really over rotating. And Zipex is going to take down Dennis. Olofmeister diving straight into the water. They're able to take one frag back onto Zipex, but still Astralis looking fairly strong here at the moment, just lining up the players long range with these rifles. The AWP, Crim's coming in with a quick headshot. But what else can he get done here? It's a very awkward position, and the bomb is now down in no man's land. Crims is not in for a good time, and there is a flank at play as well. He's trying to just work his way onto this wow. first kill, and there it is. Device goes down. Two more players to find now. This Crims very methodical. Another battle won. What is this that we're seeing now? Crims could make this happen here for Fnatic. 15 seconds to go. And we'll get a rotation coming in from Dupree. Will Crims guess right as the bomb goes down? Extra money secured for the team, but he can't win it in time. Great play coming out from Dupree. He'll get the defuse, and Astralis will hang on once again. But these rounds are very expensive. And due to the bomb plant, Fnatic will be able to fall by this round. The pressure will not end for Astralis. Colossal damage done by Crims. He only had four bullets left to try and finish the last man off, but... Again, we'll see the strains on the C2 economy. Fnatic are just waiting for that one round. Astralis only, they have five, it's a 5-0, five but it's still very early on. So this could end up in favor of Fnatic if they can finally break that C2 economy. They've got another buy thanks to that plant. Five AKs, lots of nades, much more than they had in the previous round. And Astralis can uh, say the same, but you can see the strains. Carrigan with the FAMAS rather than an M4. The device support, importantly, will be back on the AWP. Astralis have done a good job of holding angles together as a team, even when they've lost a few numbers, although Crim still savaged them in that round. And we actually have another aggressive play coming in from Astralis. They've got a very, very uh, deep uh, position on Carrigan. He's straight in the playground area. So Astralis, they can essentially deduce exactly where more or less everyone from Fnatic is. They've got so much of the map at the moment. And it's going to be interesting to see how Fnatic will actually handle the situation, if they're going to expand back out or if they're just going to try to hit the B bomb site. But if they go for the B hit, the flank will hit them very quickly, and that's dangerous. Yeah, I'm wondering if Olaf Meister heard Dupree running away from the top of Connector. Either way, they don't have the map control, and they're going to come in for the push. Flashes, another fast push from Fnatic. Counter flashes coming in. The monster players are completely stuck. Cajun B with three. Dupree coming in for the fourth. Dennis is alone. Can he get some damage into the CT side? He's only going to get the one frag, and Astralis have a solid hold. Much needed money for the CT team. Six to zero. Fnatic yet to make the scoreboard. Yeah, and the big problem here again is, is the information. You know, Fnatic there um, essentially giving up so much of the map at the, at the beginning allow Astralis just to go for these three-man pushes down a long and uh, towards the party area so they can get all the information. And then they expect what's happening. They can set up the flanks early on. They know not to you know, waste too many grenades at the wrong moments. And you know, Astralis at every point are in control of the map. So Fnatic, hopefully in the next buy rounds, we're going to see them try to take more map control and then do a delayed execute if that's what they really want to do. Oh, there we go. Quick push from the device. We'll find a frag there. Of course, Fnatic. Finally on a quasi buy. Just some pistols, some deeks. Three deeks left, though, James. Three deeks remain. You saw they had a different approach, putting most of the bodies towards A. But most of the bodies have been jettisoned into the sun already. There goes JW as well. So we have Crimson and Dennis. They have control of the bomb. And you can see Astralis start to back up now. They don't need to overextend and give away uh, kills in isolation. Although Crim seems to have a serious problem with these players, that And he re he's repeatedly shooting them in the face, no matter how limited his utility is. Both these uh, T players do have armor. That gun's going to be a bit far away for them to try and retrieve. And these Astralis players will definitely be looking to protect it. So the question is, can they get any more Juan Deegs? They can be those juicy Deagle frags. Well, it's not to be for Dennis, but Crim, he's been certainly pretty menacing with this one. Quick smoke in. Let's see what play he can make with this. Just needs to get a, another kill here. That would make the round worth it for Fnatic to keep the pressure on that economy of Astralis. And Crims is just going to go for, and he will meet his demise. We saw at the end there he was trying to, to bait a trade fragger to peek him by firing a shot and quickly looking into toilet. So smart play by him, but again, Astralis nerves of steel, just going to hold and wait for him to serve himself up. Yeah, they're so focused right now. This is really the start to this series that they needed. Right now, you know, Fnatic, as, as we mentioned, they picked the T side. They wanted to try to go in and impose themselves, their will onto the map, direct everything. But it's actually Astralis so far with their information plays 
that have had them essentially one foot ahead of Fnatic at every turn. JW has once again AWP no armor. He's going to be the connector, connector man. So if there is a push towards B, etc., he can hold an angle, a tight angle towards the door and uh, try and take some CTs by surprise. But they are not going to give him the opportunity for the time being. So after the uh, savage aggression in the previous round, where Astralis held steadfastly in previous two rounds, in fact, they're going to show, show themselves up close and then move back with a two-man rotation towards long. It's going to take Fnatic a while to clear these areas. Make sure nobody's around party, nobody's in the uh, close toilets. And while they do that, Astralis will perhaps... You can see uh, Dupree is just facing the wall on long in case his teammate gets flashed so he can turn around and try and trade worst case scenario. Yeah, it's, it's really annoying for Fnatics when Astralis have these aggressive smokes and it takes them... I mean, they have to be diligent, they have to be methodical and clear every single spot because there could be an aggressive setup almost anywhere. And uh, so far, Fnatic, they've taken some their sweet time in, in uh, doing so, but they've cleared a lot of spots. They're getting closer and closer to the setup towards A that Astralis are currently holding. And uh, it is quite a... What a devious setup, I must say. Well, speaking of A, Zipex is starting to rotate away from the B bomb site into A, but with Flusher having control of short B, they may have a read. Is his team going to rotate? They are, looks like they're going for a smoke execute, but they could easily rotate afterwards. Carrigan coming in from the back, though, could put a stop to all their plans. Flusher coming up now, he's going to get shot in the face. Surely Carrigan finds the angle. This might slow Fl uh, uh, Flusher on his teammates. Grimms gets a frag, though. Are they going to proceed? Because the Stryans know what they're up to. Yeah, a really big push coming off of that. The first frag being the cue to go for it. But look at this, three frags going the way of Astralis. It's a definitely a great result for the Danes now, as it's just Crims remaining and Dupree will silence him right at the end. And even though Carrigan wasn't able to get the frags, that information and the fact that he did some damage, and then Fnatic felt like, oh god, they figured it out, we have to go now. Again, it was, you know, Astralis just being one f uh, step ahead in that sense. There are a lot of animals on the... On the They're far too cuddly for, for a game such as this, Dan. I, I, don't, know, I, know, I, don't, right? I don't agree with them. We should take them away. <clears throat> so we have a timeout here from Fnatic. They have the money to go for a full AK buy in the following rounds. The most on their team is Crims of 48.50 in the bank. So they're going to be discussing what is, what is going wrong here. We're getting uh, into places we want to in, on some occasions. For example, the T side, if you will, of the B-bomb site. But then we're not getting the frags. We're just not making connections with the faces. Until later on in the round, there's a, you know, it's going down to the last one or two Astralis players, but they've come out on top eight times out yeah. of eight. I mean, if you think about what hasn't happened, which uh, tends to typically happen on a map like this, is you know you have a T side slowly trying to take map control on either side of the map, and, and usually a T side will be able to have opportunity at least to get a frag at least, you know, or towards the toilets or a long or something like that. So you can at least have a, a man advantage or even, a, you know, a four versus four situation where you get you play for the trade. And then it's much easier to kind of figure out how to play the round. But what's happening repeatedly is Fnatic get into this spot where they're hitting a bomb site when there's pretty much five guys left for Astralis and they have enough nades and they all have their setups intact and they know what's going to be coming already and they're just there to deal with it. So it seems like Fnatic need to engineer an advantage before they hit a site. So as far as have everything, all their, their items already, looking at their bank, three of their players are around 3,000. Cajun B and Device are on around 6K. So it's still possible for the T's to break the CTs, but they may need two consecutive rounds to do so. And then who knows, 8-7 is still possible then. Absolutely, especially on uh, this map, especially if you can break the economy of the opposition. And uh, as far as Astralis' economy, despite winning eight rounds in a row, it's actually not amazing. It's uh, the, the most rich player is on 6K, but it ranges from, from 3K to 6K. So it's, it's somewhat fragile. And uh, I'm definitely curious to see if Fnatic are going to be able to get one of those early round picks. And due to the fact that Astralis are playing aggressively towards the A side of the map at the start, there are opportunities to do so. But the problem is, is that the grenades, the smoke setups that they're using uh, aggressively at the start are actually pretty sick. It's quite kind of hard to break through those if you've never seen them before. So you saw uh, Dupree had a bit of paper next to him. I wonder if that's relating to his role in certain executes. Or maybe he just likes a bit of scripture. Who knows? Eight to zero. We'll see if Fnatic can get their first round on the board. Things looking good in the hood for Astralis at present. Fnatic don't have many nades with them. And oh, we're seeing some more aggression now from the CTs taking the uh, connector area. But JW is having none of it. Finally, he has some friends down. He swiped left, but this uh, quickly got banned from the server. Yeah, this is exactly what uh, Fnatic wanted to see, of course. That's, a, that's not just a one-man advantage, that's a two-man advantage now due to Astralis' aggression. And uh, Fnatic do have a good record of, of securing victories after their timeouts. 
And Zipex is going to go in, try to turn the tables here, and he's going to find Crims. Crims has been on point with the AK. Now the push will uh, commence, but what is KGB going to do? He's against three or four players. He's got no help, and Dennis will execute him. Device with that uh, AWP, there's really not all that much he can do with it. He realizes that, especially considering how many grenades are left in on Fnatic's hands. So it looks like Astralis will uh, not be able to do too well in this round. Just uh, Device trying to survive. And he's doing a good job of it so far. There's two frags. How much do Fnatic want to invest in trying to kill Device? I think they're done. I think they've had enough. Well, you have to wonder. I think he is going for the save. I don't think we're going to see any ninjas on this particular round. We did have Flutter try one on Mirage earlier in the tournament, but I think Device is happy to just uh, try and save the swap and stop it from getting in JW's hands. Yeah, and, and Fnatic, they invested two players to try to kill him. They don't have any money. They need it all three remaining players to survive. So it's a, it's a nice little investment initially, but they didn't really bite off more than they could choose. So that's good to see from Fnatic. So eight to one. Now it's the uh, the dangerous moment where Astralis can still feel the buy. And obviously Fnatic have to spend pretty much all their money. So there is the, the issue that they could get reset if they lose this round. And if Fnatic get reset in this kind of situation, Astralis probably go up to 11 or 12 rounds. Indeed, but uh there are many rewards to be had if Astralis are broken as well. So we'll see who comes out on top. This time we're going to have Fnatic with loads of nades, which we haven't seen for a while. All of armor as well, which is a bonus. But they didn't manage to steal that AWP for JW, who is back into connector as per usual. So we've got nades flying all over the place from both teams. We'll see what, where this leaves them in terms of map control. We have three players for the uh, T's around the B bombsite area. Flusher is susceptible to being picked off here, but there's a double peek coming in with a great flashbang, and it's going to pay off Dennis taking down Device. Yeah, now just two players left on the B-bomb site, and uh, Astralis do have uh, two players on a long, so it would be quite painful if they had to rotate those guys from long straight into the site. There wouldn't really be too much time. The rotation is so long if the B-side is lost, but Fnatic doing the really smart thing here. They're getting the man advantage, and they're going to just reposition and force two to a site or catch somebody from Astralis if he's rotating, if he's out of position, Fnatic can try to exploit that. But Astralis with such great discipline and they are really maintaining these strong setups. We can see that towards a long right now. They haven't moved a muscle. Will it pay off? Kerrigan takes down Olaf, but the trade comes in. How many Fnatic players will it take? Looks like it's just going to take two. So three versus two is now the situation as Fnatic barrel into the A bomb site, sending JW in. Cajun B under a lot of pressure here. Heavy fire from JW as they wrap around the bomb site to try to finish him off. What a round here from Fnatic. Explosive stuff onto the A side to secure it and they will be out of the danger zone they won't be reset at least uh, not in this round so Astralis have a decision to make their money is quite ropey indeed Dupree on 2200 at the upper end Carrigan and Zipex with 3850 in the bank seems we're going to go the conservative route and buy the odd pistol here and there try and do some damage maybe more but generally they're going to be ecoing for the following round so again this is a great Opportunity for Fnatic to continue continue their momentum. JW finally gets the uh, AWP he was looking for, and it's taken from Dupree, so he's going to save some money. So let's have a look at what the CTs are up to here. We've got Dupree and Device in the connector position, just waiting for an unruly T to come in and get shot in the face. But they have potential to be flanked. Never mind that. Dupree with a double dink there. Crims has had his bell rung. Wow, I'm not even sure how he found that angle. That's pretty, pretty godlike stuff there from Dupree. And this is where things can begin to get a little bit awkward. Um, I have to see if Fnatic can, can stop bleeding out players here and get some positioning on towards the site. Look at Cajun B, though. He's pushed short B, so he can tell his teammates that it's very likely to be the A site where they have indeed stacked four players between connector and the toilet. So Peck's watching long just in case, but Carrigan, Dupree, and Device are going to be covering party and connector respectively. Even got a trade situation for the CTs here. Device isn't flat despite Dupree being. Are they going to check the corner? This could be very painful indeed. Device doesn't get a single frag though. Cajun B coming in now. One for him. Almost get two at a CZ, but it's not going to be enough. Zipex versus three. Flush and Olofmeister heavily tagged. Zipex with a P250 could still do a lot of work here. The AWP is down though. If he comes across it, he has a, question, a decision to make. Does he go for the save? There's so many guns there. So many juicy weapons, but Dennis is going to finish it off. That was really dangerous there. It felt like uh, the peak was a little bit too, too premature, but of course we have all the information. And uh, that could easily have been a one-on-one -on -one at the end there, which would have been really horrendous for Fnatic. Because their money, they st they're still building that, that bank at the moment. And uh, Stralis on eight rounds already. So they actually have a lot of comfort. They can still keep 
playing aggressive and trying things out. They can indeed. They've bought down to within a few hundred dollars. More dust in their pockets than money at the moment. Device is going to be back on the AWP. All the players have armor and they're going to change up the setup now. So Device is going to be looking towards long, towards the boulder on long. Watch will be looking for uh, short B wall bangs. So in the meantime, we've got Dupree in the toilets and Kerrigan's rotated over towards the balcony area of B. So a completely different setup. This is like plan B from Astralis. Yeah, they have so many different ways of playing this map and it really is hard to read. Fnatic uh, going for some just a slower play, just taking some map control again, seeing if they can get an early duel or so, an early trade before being able to later on hit a bomb site. And with the two orbs as well, they're definitely going to take their time in this one, investing a lot of money and getting an early pick. Now, Device is the one towards A long with the AWP for Astralis. But he's not seen any action just yet. It's Dupree, he's probably had a, just a bit of stepping towards the, uh, the stairs. But Fnatic are yet to really show their hand. 55 seconds left on the clock and Flusher is starting to move into short B, but just at the same time, Cajun B and Zipex are starting to move into short B. So we're going to have a meeting of the minds here and Zipex is going to be the first to go down. Flusher doesn't get punished for reloading. Cajun B is a bit too deep. There is a flank coming in from Dupree, but they've lost two players to have Astralis, so it needs to come in fast. Yeah, it's going to be on to Cajun B now. He needs to get a couple of frags here. This is really, really hard. Three players will be peeking. There's one frag. There's the second. Not the third, but that was enough damage. And now Carrigan, he just had to delay for the flank to come in in time. Carrigan with a lot on his shoulders at the moment. A lot of pressure. There's the first shot, though. Flusher gets dropped immediately. And now it's down to Dennis to win this one-on-one. -on -one. But Carrigan, too strong. The in-game leader of Astralis. It's going to secure it, and they're going to bounce straight back, only allowing Fnatic a couple rounds before silencing them once again. Fnatic could go for a force here. Some of the players have got about 6,800 in the bank, but then some have about 2,300. Indeed, the force is going to come out. Two AKs, an AWP, and two Tech 9s. Olaf, Meister, and Crims will be looking to pick up some weapons as they go along. Things are strained for both teams. You see that uh, KGB has a FAMAS. It, there's basically no money on either side, so this round is going to be crucial, despite there being just a few rounds left in the first half. Absolutely, and uh, I mean, Fnatic had a, a great game plan previously, but you can see the, the game sense from the players like Dupree there, learnt, knowing just the perfect timing to push along to get extra information and to provide a, a flank potential to strengthen his team's round. And uh, we'll have to see if Fnatic can catch Astralis off guard for once. Fnatic didn't really see the entire setup of Astralis in the previous round. We see Device continues in long with Dupree in the toilets. Again, Carrigan is going to be switching between A and B at the moment. I'm going to see if anything's going on towards toilets as we see Fnatic continue to take some map control. Oh, Meister trying to jump peak, but he's going to get taken down regardless. JW though to trade. Yeah, that's, uh, that trade is going to be very important for Fnatic. We still have a minute left to play with. Good stuff from JW, but also from Dupree to win the one versus one against all of Meister. Dupree is, doing, is having a great game so far. And oh, bit of a trade action towards B there. And that is actually going to send Fnatic in for the push. Cajun B, a lot to deal with, too much to chew on, it seems, as JW picks up another kill in this round. Now it's going to be down to Carrigan and Device. And the rotation from A. This is going to be tough. A JW again in with another shot onto Device. And Carrigan is going to be sent home, it would seem. And Fnatic winning a very crucial round and also, crucially, surviving with three players. Even more so, the money has been reset from Astralis. Losing three rounds in a row, winning one, and then getting absolutely wrecked by JW. So their money is going to be pretty poor. With two rounds left, they'll have a decision to make if they choose to force or try and eco for the final round. Fnatic getting to a respectable, re respectable score now. That's pretty important. We'll see if Carrigan goes to pick up the AWP. We know what a dab hand he is with that. And as far as you know, what we're seeing from Astralis, they seem really, really disciplined and focused at the moment, and they're playing their game, you know, not really taking... Uh, there's, there's, there's no risk that they're taking which aren't you know, outside of their game plan. Everything looks like they're so comfortable, and that's really great to see when it's a bunch of players like Astralis, which is so good. It's usually you know, the psychological kind of breakdown when they start to play outside of their game, when some players start missing some shots and playing you know, underperforming because of the pressure. That's when we start to see Astralis you know, losing the matches, but right now they're really giving Fnatic a good game and instead putting that pressure onto Fnatic. Fnatic can't get that confidence going, that, and there are, there's a lot of confidence players on the team. So Astralis opting for the Eco, having uh, next to no money in this round. It's about 1,900 on the team. 
So we'll see. This can be a good map for stacking sites when you're on the Yuko playing the close quarters as can be a bit fiddly on the sites if you're not brim with Molotovs. There are two Mollies on the Fnatic side. And again, they're going to play the waiting game and give Astralis an opportunity to uh, serve themselves up, walking the plank, etc. But again, Astralis playing pretty deep at the moment. I'm not seeing any initial aggression towards B. There's a bit of a rotation coming in towards the A site, leaving Zipex alone, but no indication whatsoever as to where Fnatic might be going. Yeah, we'll have uh, Astralis just milling around the toilets at the moment, and Fnatic trying to play that anti-eco. And there's lots of strategies you can go with, and if they're going with a classic, this, this could be you know, somewhat easy for Astralis to predict, but even if, even if you know it's coming, that kind of movement from the Swedes, it's still hard to stop, you know, it's hard to trade against them when they've all got their backs against the wall and they're all there with rifles. It's going to be a tough job and Flusher will already be finding one frag on Dupree. And I think the stepping has been heard of Fnatic by Astralis, so Astralis have confirmed what's going on. But can they get the frags? They've only got pistols here at the moment to deal with. And uh, here goes Dennis, here goes the rest of Fnatic, just piling into these CTs. There's Carrigan with the M4, picking up three kills already. Beautiful stuff there, a fourth from Carrigan. All of a sudden, Flush is left with 8 HP and no teammates to speak of. 20 seconds left in the round as well. Somehow, Astralis are pulling this one out of the bag. I have no idea how they've accomplished this, but Carrigan is on point in this match. So right now, Zipex is waiting for the perfect moment. Wants to hear those beeps. And there it is. Slight repositioning from him now, and also expecting his teammate to come in. Carrigan can, is still full HP, he can attack Flusher from behind. Flusher picks off Zipex, he can't hold off Flusher for long enough. Now another one-on-one, -on -one. can Flusher make it happen? He can't! What an ace coming out of Carrigan! In-game leader, master of all it would seem, AWP or a rifle, this guy is on fire. Dennis tried to get a plant in the middle of the firefight, completely exposed to the plays and toilets. I don't know if that was a miscommunication, but nowhere was safe because Zipex was still rotating from the B bomb site. He was basically in the stairs where Carrigan is standing now, so there was nowhere they had to plant the bomb. What a massive 5k by the in game leader, Talisman of Astralis. Absolutely beast. It shows you the power of one saved rifle gun. That was nasty. Around they had no right to win. He cared none for Fnatic's ideas there. and. Look what that's done to the Fnatic economy. Olaf Meister's on a MAC-10, Dan, and they've got double Deagles onto Flusher and Kim Crims. Dennis on uh, a Galil. It's a bit of a mess over there. Absolutely, and JW, he's, uh, he's naked with the AWP, no Kevlar to speak of. So, yeah, it's uh, not, not uh, optimal, that is for sure, but let's see what they can get done. Olaf Meister going in with the MAC-10. Of course, he's going to be that uh, sacrificial lamb for the team, but he's not going to be able to accomplish much. He can't really enable a trade, so it's a free frag in the end. Fnatic down a man, and perhaps thinking about that uh, B bomb side once again. Have to see if they can get the opens that openings that they need to make it happen. Of course, they do have a selection of grenades, but lack of Molotovs is always going to be a little bit uh, sad when you try to hit this site. Well, Astralis are well prepared with three people on the B bomb site at the moment. We've got the counter flashes slowing the T's down. That was going to help stop the JW from, JW from getting in work, but Dennis has opened the proceedings there on the B bomb site, taking down Zipex, moving up to get a nice angle there. Dink, and he's going to finish him off as well. Cajun B going down, trades, however, three versus three. The site once again split in half, but this time Fnatic are a little bit closer to the bomb site. Carrigan is rotating in from upper as well. See if he can help his teammates to look over those smokes. Fnatic still jockeying for position. JW gets the numbers in his team's advantage. You see a boost coming in from Dupree, but no frags for him. It's going to be really hard in this final round. They have no choice but to go for it. Yeah, around the Fnatic should never win. They are pulling it out of the bag now just when they needed to, but can they make it happen? Pull it over the line for the last one of the first half. Device and Dupree are bearing down on the bomb site now. Dupree jumping into the water. Let's see if he can check for some uh, close angles, but Crims is on the bomb site there. It's going to send Dupree back, and Device can't quite find the angles he needs here. He's going to have to go close as well to aid his teammate. Device with nothing to speak of now. It's five HP left on him. It looks like Fnatic have pulled it off. Stealing away around. Ring around the bomb site, Dan. It's a bit dangerous. Five. Yeah, it's... Uh, Pretty back and forth. It's great to see after Fnatic lost that, that round previous because the way that they lost it against USPs and one rifle, that, is, that hurts the morale. That, that puts a little bit of a dent in the morale. And then to win a round where you're not expected to after, directly afterwards, that's going to bring them back up again. Yeah, I was going to say, they know, they know that, the, that they are the best team in the world. But when you go up against a team like that and you get aced by the one person who has a rifle, that's got to be a bit dejecting. But then to come back and say, no, this is our round. You took our round, we'll take your round. 
then perhaps that gets them back in the right frame of mind. They're going to have two minutes here to recompose themselves. And that's for both teams. I think 10-5, will Astralis be happy with that? Oh, yeah, I think so, yeah. I mean, this is, uh, this is a map they're very comfortable with playing. And also, it's just the way that they've been, that they got the 10-5. All the players are hitting their shots. Everyone is playing comfortably. The, the, their game plan is obviously working. You can see a lot of setups that they've obviously prepared going into this match. You can see a lot of timings and, um, that they've been pushing um, towards you know, the A side, of the, you know, the way that they've been getting information on that CD side. They just look so comfortable. Everything is going their way. So I would be surprised for them to have a, a bad T half. It was not an enjoyable half for Olaf Meister, who no. went 3 for 14. So uh, we'll see if he can get back to his normal winning ways. In the second half, Flash are top of the leaderboard with JW actually with the highest frags, but Flash is getting them MVP stars. Is that a dinosaur? Well, I don't know what that is. I'm not sure, to be honest. A monstrosity, James. It's a fox. There we go. Got some, Got some Olaf Meister fans. Little Svenska. I'm not going to try reading that. But I pr I can pull yeah, it I, th I think you should try reading that. It's too late now, James. I've been saved. <laughs> I've been saved from embarrassment. Producer can make it happen. I know he can. Dan thinks he's... There we go. Go on. Well, that's all in English, James, so it's, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> hey, Twitch, MLG, CSGO, Major. That's like... So you're, so you're Let's just move on, Dan. You're so English. Let's just move on. Right. Australia's going to start on the, on the T side now. Oh, so Fnatic, okay. have, <laughs> Fnatic have had their warm-up. I would say love you too, but I don't know who you are. Sorry. So Fnatic on with uh, five rounds on the CT side. They chose to, ch to start on the T side and have their warm up. So they're coming in warm now. Pistols are obviously going to be massively important. Let's see who gets the headshots on this occasion. Yeah, everyone's just going straight for it at the moment. All the way down into connect into connector. It's a complete bloodbath in there. Bodies all over the place. And it's going to be Fnatic this time around who are going to be standing tall. But uh, it is the B bomb site that Astralis have. They can get a plant too. So at the very least, they're going to get the money in the bag. But can they get the round as well? It's still one player hiding. It's Crims. It's, oh, wow. How on earth did he not pick that one up? It's going to be tough now for Device. In fact, Flush is just going to go straight in. Oh, out. no. The tea bag. The tea bags. We've got a Typhoo tea. That's definitely not green tea, Dan. It looks a bit more brown. Oh my god. Oh, we've got tea bags all over the place. Flush is actually just walking on all the carcasses. But James. We've got mad tea bags, Dan. But where's, know, where's we, the 360? Dan, we had, we had tea in the caster room, and then somebody removed the machine. It seems Flusher has it, Dan. Because we've got tea bags all over the place. Look at him, he loves it. That is disgusting. I thought we'd get a replay of the, of the tea bag, actually. That would be more interesting. I think we are, James. Oh, we are. Here we go. Oh, there we go. There's, there's no milk in that tea bag. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So back in this one now, 10-6 is the score. Astralis will be losing the, uh, the initial round, but at least they pick up the bomb plant. So that's the, the money there. They can play the AKs. In the following round, they've decided to only stick a Deagle on Dupree and a couple PT-50s. So what they'd really love in this round, considering that there are no nades and they are buying this round anyway, the bomb plant's not super important, but keeping the money down for Fnatic, if they Ooh. get two more frags here, Fnatic will be set to an eco if Astralis win the next round. So that's what they're playing for, and that's already one frag. Fnatic are looking for body bags. Unfortunately, Flusher is the first one to go in. He's been zipped up, as has Cajun B. But again, the gun has not been collected. It's being protected by Fnatic, and Olaf Meister will go and pick it up and upgrade the FAMAS that he had. So let's have a look at the layout of the T's at the moment. We've got Zipex. He's taken control of short B, which allows Astralia to try and bum rush the site, as we were saying in the UK. We see the rotation of the T's coming into his direction. We've got a smoke down in the... Uh, Monster position. And they're moving towards the B bomb site. We've still got two CTs on either side. JW and Olaf Meister are a few seconds away. And there we go. Dupree with another headshot with Deagle. And now it's going to be difficult for Fnatic to hold here. It's getting a little bit awkward indeed. Oh, they're jumping over the top into Dennis. It's going to go down straight away by Water. Now JW is coming in, wondering what the hell's going on. Olaf Meister from up top as well has to combine with the sniper, who's without a sniper rifle at the moment. There goes the flash in, and Olaf Meister is going to try to get himself some frags done now. As JW is maybe afforded a bit of space to move in close to these tees, but they're all over the place. Olaf Meister will pick up one. Can he get the second? It's Dupree with the frag. As JW now scrambles to try to get something done here, jumping across with that rifle spraying frantically. He'll pick one up, but it's just Dupree left. The bomb is ticking away quite rapidly now. And Dupree has got the deagle in hand. Oh, the hold comes in. 
Pros don't fake. JW, what a man. He never had any doubt, James. Maybe he did. It's a 50-50. I thought Astralis had the round, but uh, Fnatic somehow keep themselves in the game. If they lost that round, then you had to you had to be looking at 1-0 to Astralis here. But no, they were absolutely denied. Fnatic closed the gap to three rounds now. We have the buy coming out from Astralis. They got bonus money in that round. They worked with very, very little indeed. We've got JW going for the smoke. That goes into the monster tunnel. Maybe we can follow it and see if it gets there in time. There are two teams actually quite close to it. He will be successful. We saw, I think it was Get Right who did it for NIP in the previous match and he missed it completely. But indeed, that's the, I would say, preferred side of monster that you want to smoke. Because if you put the smoke down, that goes onto the CT side. And as we saw from Olaf Meister, the T's can punish you for it. Absolutely. And right now, James, we see a Mag 7 on the Olaf. Nice. But uh, yeah, it's, he's been a bit quiet this, this uh, match so far. So it'd be quite cool to see if him if he can get back in it with this, this Mag-7. But uh, Strahl is taking it really slow at the moment. And it's cool to see a really slow pace from them in this round, just to kind of feel things out, see how the map is, see how the setups are for Fnatic. However, that said, they are not really controlling much of A-Long or Toilets at the moment. And that's information that Fnatic do have, because Olaf Mitre is in, the, in position to, to hear anything there. But here goes Cajun B into oh. position. Oh, oh no! In with the mag. It's just one frag, though. Carrigan gets the trade, and a bit of spray through the wooden panel there is going to uh, tag Crims down a little bit, too. So, Fnatic under pressure. The, the site is going to be under attack now as well. Dennis by the barrels. There's no grenades for it, but it doesn't matter. AK-47 is coming in, and it is brutal. Crims responds with two frags, though, keeping Fnatic in the round. Got Flusher and Crims with a crossfire, but it's going to be hard for them to peek and find anything as the bomb gets planted. Carrigan is heavily tagged, and it seems Flusher's going for the high ground, which might be useful as we have smokes coming out. We've got Device who's looking for a pick with AWP, and Flush is just waiting for a T to serve themselves up for him. The timing, though, is absolutely unreal. Two versus one now. Crims, we know that he is very capable of the clutch. He's got no nades left, has a kit, but he's got two to fire. This is going to be extremely hard for him. Time is ticking as well. Surely he can't get both kills. Trying to push short, he can hear him, can Carrigan. And he's not going to find the right angle at the right time, but he's going to get a kill regardless and probably save because the defuse is going to be too late now. Damage done to the Astralis side, but Fnatic have lost another round. Yeah, a bit of frustration indeed. It's uh, not really panning out super well for them in that sense. And uh, I have to see if they can bounce back. It does feel like consistently they're, they're in the spot where they just have to find some way to bounce back into this one that these rounds that they should be winning, they keep slipping away in Well, Dan, the problem is ways. the only place they can bounce to is the pawn shop because they've got no money to buy anything at the moment, which means that Astralis are very likely to go to 12. It seems, are we going to see a force coming out? We saw Crims drop a FAMAS for one of his teammates. We'll see. Olaf Meister still got 2,600 in the hole. He's going for the Mag 7 again, so they have chosen to force up. They've got nothing left in the bank, Dan. Yeah, this is a little bit awkward, isn't it? And uh, I mean, if they could win a round like this with weaponry like this, then there's going to be a big boost. But how on earth are they going to pull it off? Astralis as well, you know, they're going to be considering the money. They're going to be reading it and then trying to apply a strategy. So they might be a little bit surprised by it. We'll have to see. You can see it from them right now. And if they are what, thinking of going for you know, fast B here, that is a good way to do an anti-force buy. Yeah, but they would have had to do that from the from T spawn more or less. They don't have control of short B as you can see here. Dennis oh. is holding very close. There's no flashbang coming in for the T's. Oh yes, there is. Carrigan is gonna get Dennis regardless regardless of him looking away. Trades coming in, favoring Astralis. There's still a rifle and a Mag 7 on the CTs. Olaf Meister looking to do some dirty business, but he's gonna get cleaned up by Cajun B. Four versus two now. JW with the Deagle. He needs to find one at least well, probably two headshots here to give his team a chance. Looking for it, not gonna find it. Flusher now. Last man standing may have to save. This match is brought to you by the letters F and R for fully wrecked. Because it looks like Astralis are charging towards game one, Dan. Yeah, it does look like, uh, look like that's going to happen. If Fnatic next round, I mean, it's pretty much a full save. And uh, so, so, yeah, Astralis are probably going to be looking at 12, 13 rounds easily now. And uh, Fnatic, they don't they never really look incredibly into this match so far. But uh, you never know. You can never count Fnatic out of all teams. Fnatic find a way. I think they mentioned it on the desk. They're one of the teams that always are, are very adept at finding adaptations within a match. If they're, if they're having a struggle, if players are underperforming or their setups aren't working, they're one of the best teams at making it work on the fly. So, so if there's any team to bring it back, it would be Fnatic. 
So, Flusher, the last man standing for his team will be most of what they have to muster in the following rounds. You can see the rest of his team only have around $2,000 in the bank. We've got things being thrown into the crowds at the moment. Where's my swag, Jeps? We are swagless over here, over on this side. I have swag. Oh. I am swag. <laughs> it's not my fault you're poverty, mate. All right, well, here we go. We're back into it. 12-7 is the scoreline. The Danes, Astralis, and the Scandinavian face-off are having a better time of overpass so far, and it looks like Dupree is going to be getting himself straight in there. Oh, but Olofmeister are actually spotting it here, and uh, I mean, even though if they know what is actually going to be coming and, and hitting them, what are they going to defend with? They've got nothing to speak of. It's just pistols, apart from Flush, who's got the FAMAS, and Astralis will take the B-bomb side with ease. Maybe Crimson can get a sneaky frag or two, but uh, otherwise, looks like a pretty... Pretty easy cleanup, as expected for, for Astralis. Yeah, not much to be done here by the Fnatic side, other than Flusher saving what little he has. Famas and Kevlar will be helpful going into the following round. Again, his team have about $2,000 in the bank. They'll get 2400 at the end of this round. So they'll be walking a thin line there. Yeah, I mean, at least, as you say, you know, Flusher can drop that Famas, buy a new rifle, get some grenades. So there will be grenades in the next round for them, but... Uh, I mean, you know, what is the solution going to be? Are they going to tighten up onto the bomb side? So they're going to play more aggressively? Because you know, at this point, you'd expect them to think that some sort of risk is is uh, is the order of the day. Yeah, aggression will need to be seen. As Fnatic need early advantages here. So let's see what kind of buy they have coming out. Are they going to go for the M4s or are they going to go for the Famasses and get some more grenades? They've still got a reasonable amount of grenades actually. Got four smoke grenades coming out. A few flashes, the one Molotov onto Flusher and the one Diffuse Kit onto Flusher as well. So let's see if they can hold the advance of Astralis, who are marching towards a game one. We knew they were super solid on overpass, the Astralis side, and it's going to be hard not to favor them on this particular map. And it's a really big deal that JW can never get an AWP in his hands. That's, that's a massive, massive disadvantage for Fnatic on the CT side of overpass. But for now, we're going to see Astralis putting some pressure in, you know, light, uh, light map control plays towards the A side of the map. And Fnatic are playing rather close to the toilet's area, so, you know, they can very well get that early round advantage. Need to win that frag, and it's going to be Dupree. Once again, Astralis with the early advantage, but JW, you know, is going to be sticking around here, seeing if he can get the uh, trades. And this is a very risky play from him, but they need to go big or go home at this point on overpass. But look at Cage and B and his teammate. JW is in a position to flank them. He's got one kill, not going to get the second one. Has two men taking him down. That's some information, at least, for the remaining Fnatic players, as everyone seems to be headed towards the A site. There are smokes everywhere, Dan. We've got counter flashes coming out as well. The bomb should get planted, though. Dennis had a chance to get two, doesn't get any, and Fnatic are in a lot of trouble. But there are many heavily tagged players on the Astralis side. Those smokes disappearing. Two frags coming in quickly for a Fnatic. Two versus two now. Bo the diffuse kit's on the floor somewhere. No needs to smoke off the bomb. They need to find these frags, and Astralis are very far back indeed. Yeah, this is such a tough situation with the bomb planted there facing the toilets. You can see that Fnatic know exactly what's up here. There's even a smoke ready for Zipex, but he's got Crims pushing his position. Zipex is going to smash Crims with that AK, leaving Olaf Meister in a very hard spot. He's going to get the first frag, taps the bomb. Will Zipex go for it? Goes for the quick peek, and there's just not enough time for Olaf Meister to do this. It's such a hard position to be in as a CT, and once again, Astralis is going to pull it over the line and grab themselves that 14th round. 14 to 7, what a, what a scoreline. I did not expect it to be like this on Everpass. We have had four explosions in a row and two diffuse kits. Basically, the bomb's been plotted every round of this half and a fair few times in the previous. So, uh, Astralis having a lot of success on the T side and it may continue here as we have a force coming out from Fnatic. Flusher's on the AWP and we have JW on the Mag 7. Flusher's going to be going over towards Long and JW will be in the connector position. She. Uh, has been playing a bit of on both sides. Instantly smoked off by the T, so he's not going to have much to do for the time being. Meanwhile, we've got a fast push into B from Astralis. Yeah, I love this. They're just walking out there, and there's the Molotov standing in the flames. Krims gets out of there, though, with a frag as well. That's a really good response. And now, Olofweiser gets flashed in towards the monster. Fnatic are retaking control of the monster area. Just great play from the Swedes so far, as they really are able to just stop this push from Astralis. And Astralis now, you know, they have the good... Uh, 
good cognizance to be able to, within the chaos, say, all right, guys, this is not panning out. Let's, let's rethink this round now. Unfortunately for them, they didn't get any frags, but what they did do is put four players to 50% health, 50 health or less, which is kind of a big deal as well. There's a lot of money on most of the Astralis players as well, so there's no little reason for them to uh, not try and do as much damage as possible. The bomb has been left, though, in an extremely passive position, which is going to be a problem, especially with only two players left. The device is going to head over and grab it. So 45 seconds left on the clock. Still no Fnatic players down. They will understand the importance of taking as many Fnatic players with them as they possibly can. And it looks like they're going to go for a push towards the upper bomb site. But JW has a gun which fires seven shells at once, Dan. Indeed. There's a lot of nades actually on Astralis, but wow, the guy's picking up a headshot there. Oh no, KGB getting a backstab on JW. And let's see if they can make it happen now. There's not a lot of time. They are playing against the clock. 15 seconds. I don't think the device can stop running. He's got to just go straight for the plant right now. There's three players here. He's going for a quick engagement. Oh my goodness, pulling the crosshair with that spray. Finds a headshot, as does KGB. Tapping away, using the Molotov now to try to put the pressure on Crims. And Crims goes down to the Are device. you serious? What a ridiculous clutch. With 15 seconds, they're sprinting all the way. Somehow, Astralis, they are surely just destined to win this map. That is absolutely insane. Again, it, it, part of it is going to come down to all the damage that was done earlier on in the round by their fallen teammates. So it made those frags a little bit easier. But a two versus five clutch. That, I mean, look at the Crimson's face. He's like, this is not, this is not happening right now. Yeah, they, but, but it is. deflated right now, that's for sure. Okay, it, what, a, uh, what a way to potentially lose the map as well, going into the second. Yeah, and, and on the CT side, they've been continually in a spot where they don't have the setups that, because they don't have the weapons that they want or the grenades. This is always a struggle for Fnatic. And Device is going to pick off Flusher immediately at the start of the round. They're going aggressive. Dennis, great stuff there. Two frags found with the M4 towards A-Long. And finally, Fnatic putting the hurt back onto Astralis. Man advantage for the CT side, but they haven't really been able to upgrade any of the weaponry they have. So they're still rolling with two Mag 7s and two M4s. They've got just the one flashbang onto JW. Maybe they can get it in a position where his teammates with rifles can punish. HB coming in, and that is going to make things uh, strongly in Fnatic's advantage. Now we see the rifle upgrades coming out. Dennis has got an AK-47. Still more damage to be done, though, by Astralis. Never mind that. The bomb's been taken down, and the... Teammates of Olaf Meister can converge on that position. One minute for Device to do as much damage as possible. Misses the shot. We'll see if the orb can be rescued for the CT side. Down but not out are Fnatic. Yeah, Dennis has had enough of this game. <laughs> Just uh, great, great kills there on A-Long. That really set Fnatic up in that round. But there's still so much more work to be done. And it's map point here for the Danes of Astralis. And, uh, you know, they, there's so much that they can throw at Fnatic still. You know, they, they have so many rounds in advantage. They can get really creative and uh, do some really crazy stuff. And we've seen them do some crazy stuff already and just walking on to B with three players. And uh, Fnatic always under this pressure and they need to get that confidence going. And maybe Dennis uh, can provide a bit of breathing room now. JW's going to hit two players going down through in Crimson. And Dennis will pick up the Franks as well. As Astralis are keeping the pace up on high towards B. Lots of trades going in the short B area. And they have a potential to get flanked. Device unlucky not to get uh, any frags there, but wrong place, wrong time. JW takes him down. And this is going to be a big problem for the economy of Astralis should they uh, lose this round now. The bomb's in the B bomb site. The flash not working out either. And Dupree, again, it's going to come down to a situation where he needs to do as much damage as possible. There's nothing in the bank for the T's if they lose this round. So Fnatic have an opportunity to catch up and we know what they're capable of. So this is definitely not over yet. If they can survive with four players as well, then uh, they will have more utility going into future rounds. Yeah, I mean, you know, if the Pre's in this spot where he's just concerned about punishing Fnatic if they get a little bit too greedy. Fnatic have no reason to push at the moment. They don't really gain much from killing Dupree, to be honest. And, uh, but what they stand to lose is quite significant. And there it is, Olaf Meister picks up the kill. As Dupree goes for the face, and he won't pick up the frag. Dupree, though, has had a really phenomenal overpass, to be honest, overall. Um, he is top fragging for Astralis up there with Device and Carrigan. Everyone uh, on Astralis really you know, pulling their weight. Yeah, everyone on Astralis has also broke that. So Fnatic, six round behind, have an opportunity. They've got two AKs as well, which would definitely help. And, uh, they do have some strong aimers on their team. 
almost pure Glocks in this round. That's a great flash to cause problems to the Astralis side, moving around the playground area. Fnatic playing deep for the time being. TW spotting some plays and he will control the party. Ooh, indeed. See if he can get any more. JW may be biting uh, the cherry one too many times. The rifle's been picked up as well, so now Fnatic have a problem. There's two players here as well. Olaf Meister is coming in for a bit of help, though. So the AK is down on the T side. AK is up on device, but it's one versus four, and that will be that. Dennis coming in with the final two headshots. Yeah, JW is uh, looking really, really good at the moment. Not really too phased, and uh, that's always good to see when JW is. Uh, of course, you know, of all the players that, that need the confidence, it's definitely JW when he finally gets the, the open hand, because some of the, the kinds of plays that he makes require confidence and, and then some. But 15-10 uh, and Fnatic begin to close the gap, and double orb is the day is the play of the day here for, for Fnatic. Olaf Meister and JW picking those orbs up, and so this is going to be a completely different round from the rounds we've seen from Fnatic, where they've just never had money. So we had Olaf Meister try to smoke off but uh, the monster tunnel, but he failed, and Crims had to use his smoke straight away, basically. So that may play a part in the round a bit later on. Ideally, Crims would have been re-smoking it, and they would have had it smoked off for a much longer time, but that's not going to be the case. Olaf Meister is actually going to go and have a peek towards it with AWP, but not make connections. Effect saw his feet, but nobody is going to go down. You see JW holding long with his AWP as well. He has people to find, but Device is going to be the first to strike. We've got Trays coming in with Flusher, going to the Tech 9, not fast enough though. Dupree takes him down, and now Fnatic have a problem. Three versus four. Yeah, how are they going to save themselves here now? Because they don't know exactly where Astralis are going to go. Astralis are going to play this as any top tier team would and just take their time and and create enough doubt for Fnatic. And if Fnatic want the information, they'll have, to, they'll have to push for it. And if they do that, there's a lot of risk. They get caught out of position. And Astralis, you know, they're just holding and uh, expecting that information play, it would seem, and looking to try to get the punish in. And uh, here goes Olaf Meister. Is he going to run into Cajun B or any other players who are nearby? Uh, looks like he will. One spot. Cajun B coming out of the stairs. Picks up the Kalanta Dennis. That's just two men left now for Fnatic. Olaf Meister has got to get something out of this AWP MP250 that he has. And he is going for some crazy plays here. Let's see if he can pull something off now. Able to actually somehow create some sort of a flank situation. And Krims on the bomb side as well. This is absolute madness. What can they get done here? Oh no! Krims is down straight away by Dupree. Olaf Meister, a great flick onto Carrigan, but he will get backstabbed himself by Zipex. 16 to 10, and Astralis will find themselves the victors of map one in this round of eight match against Fnatic on overpass. Astralis win their pick, and we will head over to Mirage. Sorry, Cash. We will head over to Cash, which was the pick of Fnatic. So uh, there's a tougher test ahead for the Astralis side. We'll see if they are up for the challenge, but definitely a great start. Great for confidence. Again, I think there was a stat where Fnatic had won 13 of the last 15 times they, they had played Astralis. So that is definitely going to be a boost, a cushion going forward. But they can't take it for granted because Fnatic are the best team in the world. We're going to head over to some commercials, guys, and we will see you back here for Map 2 in just a few minutes.
All right, folks, we are back. Let's talk, gentlemen, a little about that first matchup. Uh, again, I'm going to start with you, Moses, because we talked about, you know, picking the harder side. And, uh, again, Astralis said, go ahead and pick it. We'll start 8-0 on you. And they put him in a hole right off the bat. Yeah, they really did. Um, but, I mean, like Fnatic, they, <laughs> they, they got their five rounds, you know. They, they got the rounds the amount that they needed to, uh, to win that match. And it was, it was actually the CT side where they struggled, which is... Um, very surprising because on this map, you know, against in the past and overpass, and actually this has been a change that I, that has slowly started to creep up. Um, one of the ways that we, one of the weaknesses we've seen in Fnatic is that without Pronax, without that ter stereotypical tactical mind, we've started to see their T sides get a little bit weaker. So when teams jump out on them like that, they're not always able to recover. This time they're able to do it, but on the CT side, this is this is an Astralis that was very very strong, um, very decisive. And they won the exact way that you expect them to, with the Vice and Dupree topping the scoreboard. That duo that, that has been so dangerous in the past for all the different iterations of this Danish lineup, um, those guys played uh, a great game. And on the other side, we have Olaf, who wasn't you know, up to his usual level of play. Yeah. I think Fnatic in the first half, they were a bit baited by the fact that they would pressure uh, Astralis' economy in those rounds. Yeah, it would be a 1v4 for Creams or JW, which somehow ended in a 1v1. Astralis would win the round. But that would put pressure on their economy, right? So obviously Fnatic, who force buys a lot, they are going to keep force buying while that pressure exists because they know if they win one round, that's going to reset the money system for Astralis. They would have to maybe even double eco and so on. And in the end, they just couldn't win that one round. As you mentioned, uh, Fnatic, uh, Astralis had an 8-0 start and it was really a, a great performance from them in the first half. Robin, what stood out for you when you were watching? I mean, the one thing Janko touched upon it coming into the game was how many rounds that uh, Astralis lost versus Fnatic at IEM Katowice, all those clutch situations. And this map, uh, you didn't really see that. Actually, Astralis won most of them. Uh, and that's we were, we were touching about that be before coming into the game as well, that they need to win those rounds. And it feels like they have a good lock on it. Uh, oh, did not really lose that many clutch situations after plant. Uh, retakes on bomb sites which overall was just very solid performance and Dupree I mean he he had a massive game yeah he was huge and it, actually it, it was a very fanatic esque win that that um Australis had it and just specifically in that, that one round towards the end when it was what Cajun and device actually won like a two on four two on five situation uh, just slow playing that round out and working together very very well and finally getting into that a bomb site so that was really sick to see it's almost as if these two teams mirrored each other in this particular game everything we're used to seeing from Fnatic, it all went Astralis' way in this game. As we saw in the replay, the, the round where Cajun B got uh, the, uh, double kill from that you know, short position as well. They were in a 3v4. They managed to bring that round back. The Kerrigan ace on the round that, in which yeah. they saved basically also meant a lot for them because in, if they didn't win that round, it would probably go 8-7 for Astralis instead of 10-5, which would give more room to Fnatic in the second half. All right, Jim, and final thoughts on the first map. I, I think on. just as a note to Olaf Meister having a bad game, he did come into the tournament saying that he has a wrist problem, yeah. a little bit, uh, you know, pain in the wrist. Uh, and I think it shows here. I mean, he's not really, this particular map, he wasn't really playing up to par. Bottom of the scoreboard didn't really have much of an impact. Hopefully it's not the wrist, just about uh, an off game, but I guess we'll see on uh, map number two. And, you know, just, just on, on the point of injuries, like everyone thinks, oh, these guys just sit in their houses and they just play video games all day. But when you do it for a living and you do it this much, you do have injury type yeah. things that will happen, you know, with your wrists, with your hands. Um, so again, it, it, as these guys get more and more professional and have more hours logged, like that is going to be a real concern as, as all esports grow. Because again, you figure, you know what, whatever sport you do in athletics, what, where, your, where your triggers are for injuries, well, this is their injury. This is the most important thing. His, his mouth hand is the most important yeah. thing on the planet for him. I think and it, it's not just all of mine as well. You have Guardian with yep. the same thing. Nothing now as well. Pronax. Uh, Kerrigan actually as well. Kerrigan as well. So you do see the... Uh, that, that more and more people are actually starting to have, uh, yeah. have problems. And, and other esports as well. It's oh, not just, absolutely. Just oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's all on, you know, how you set your desk. It's all about, you know, proper ergonomics when you sit, right? And that's, that, again, that's going to be, uh, that could be a career debilitating incident. You know, maybe we'll all, sure, uh, you know, maybe, injury. maybe it will just come to the point where everyone just sits like JDM. <laughs> maybe he's <laughs> on to something with the whole laid back yeah. thing. We're going to find out soon enough about how he, he does. All right. Let's, uh, we've got actually uh, a fan, I believe, and he's going to get interviewed by Pocket. So, Chris, why don't you take it away, see what these guys have to say down there. Thank you, Scoots. I'm down here in the VIP lounge, and I am the meat in a very warm Fanatic fan sandwich. Fellas, 
How has this been so far for you? I see you all decked out. Are you worried for the Fnatic guys? Nah, I mean, look, you're gonna, overpasses for them. We're going to win 2-1. 2-1, it, it makes sense. Now now talk to me, my friend. How far did you drive? How long have you been a fan? Tell me tell me a little bit about yourself. I drove eight hours. I've been a fan for a couple years now, Fnatic. I hope Olaf turns up. He kind of went potato first game, so hopefully he turns up a little bit. Wrist problems turns into potato sometimes. It happens. All right, back to you, my friend. Uh, what, what rank are you in the game? Do you even play? It's a four-star, yeah. Four-star? Uh, MG2. Nova 3, baby. Back up to the booth. Let's go! That was his Halo rank. I, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not sure if anyone has ever said Olaf has gone potato before. I don't know. <laughs> I, that, that's the first, it's actually. Amazing. It's and, pretty uh, brilliant. And the thing is, that note that I have there, Same. being Swedish and all, I can't say it. Say it. It oh, is not it. allowed on air to all say right, that. Fair enough, fair enough. Let's just say... <laughs> That I will confirm with the statement that you have going on that poster. <laughs> All right, fair, fair enough. Everything is correct. So let's move on. No Yanko, to I'm going to hit you up first, Yanko. Uh, now we move on to Cash, and it's going to be Astralis on the T side starting. Yeah, I think the, the problem here for Fnatic is that the thing that they are strongest at, you know, clawing back those rounds, which didn't work for them, winning most of the clutch rounds and so on, that that's where the problem for them comes in, right? They don't have strats that they can fall back on if that isn't working for them. So for me, in order for them to come back into this match, they need to have a talk, they need to reset, and they need to find a, a, a way to get that group back, right? Because as, as I pointed out, it's not like a Navi, like a Luminosity, where, where they have some, OK, guys, we're not you know, on fire individually. Let's try some set strats that will maybe give us an advantage here and there. And to be honest, Astralis is looking pretty confident. You know, in, in individually, they're pretty pumped. And I really feel that this is their time. If they do not beat Fnatic here, I don't know. Yeah, this is actually, this is a, for someone who predicted Fnatic to win this 2-1, that, that was a scary first match to watch yeah. um, from Astralis. That was really, really good. And Cash is also a map where in the past, when Fnatic has played this, um, a lot of their success, it, it was like this map and Train, I always felt, where the, where the maps were Fnatic really leaned heavily on Olaf. To, to really produce, uh, to really open things up. Now, fortunately, they have JW, who seems to have, like, he's been having this resurgence lately. He's still playing at a really, really high level. Um, very, very skilled, obviously, but he did have, like, a little quiet period there towards the end of last year, but he's back. They're going to need more of him, um, but Olaf does, is going to have to show up because they have him in a lot of crucial positions where, or have his play style in very crucial spots where it actually opens things up for the team. So if he's not having that success, it's going to, it's going to trickle down to the other players. And one thing to note as well, like, because Astralis just came off of the win on Overpass now, they're starting on T-Sun on Cash. They can keep up that momentum, just keep on pushing Fnatic up to an awkward spot, especially with all of us having a bad game. They might actually run away with this, and that's what I said coming into the game as well. Fnatic, I think, needs to win 2-0, because the third map is obviously Mirage, yeah. and I heavily favor that Astralis in that one. All right, thank you very much, gentlemen. That's going to do it for our segment. Again, could Fnatic go out 2-0, 2, -0 -0 -2? I, I don't see it possibly happening, but you never know. These guys are on fire. They own their own team now. Astralis might be able to push it, get it over with, move themselves to the semifinals. We're going to take a quick commercial break. and we come back, James and DDK are going to walk you through map two. Potato. Can Fnatic bring it back after a tumultuous map one on overpass? I think this next map, Mirage, is definitely going to favor them a little bit from the, you know, just allowing, allowing them to enable some players like JW and Olaf Meister a little bit more. But Olaf Meister definitely needs to get his uh, game stepped up a little bit because just now we didn't really see really a, a peep from him. 
He, he had uh, a much better perform performance on the CT side, but they ran out of rounds to win, basically. Yep. I think uh, Akash is a map that's going to lend itself more to his style. Um, I think he's got more opportunity to be him, essentially. And I mean, Fnatic was shut down, shut down in a number of rounds by Astralis, who were just super solid on overpass, as one would expect them to be. So this is the pick of Cash, uh, the pick of a Fnatic, sorry. <laughs> I think it is the expected pick as well, generally speaking. So yeah. uh, it's, I would say it's their map to win. And I think it's gonna be, they're going to be a serious problem for Astralis here. And we'll have to see. I think the orping of device is going to be really important if, he's, if he is to keep Astralis in this game. And uh, the same could be said for the CT side as well. I mean, they have the potential to even double orp on this map as they did in the previous one. We see Olaf Meister has been picking it up a lot more often recently, so... Yeah, the scary thing is, for, you know, for me, is just how focused we've seen Astralis be. No one really has been dropping a beat, more or less. I mean, we've got a situation where Zipex wasn't really in a position where he had to try to save the team all too much. And he has been a big performer for the team uh, as of late. But in the last match, he didn't have to do all that much. He didn't really have to pull them out of any situations. All of them, the main players were, uh, who were supposed to be fragging were getting the frags. Carrigan had that really sick clutch. Well, it's what the one versus five, essentially, with, uh, with a r the rifle, the rest of his teammates having USPs. So a lot of uh, incredulous stuff there from the Astralis side. So I'm really looking forward to seeing um, you know, going into cash, we see for some reason I said Mirage before, before I don't know why I did that, James, I guess that's the third map. But uh, obviously, you know, seeing that level of confidence, I'm very stoked to see the kind of strategic depth and execution that we're going to see from them going into, into this map here. And Fnatic are going to have to be really on point with their shots. And uh, as, uh, as Fnatic are starting off on the CT side, they could be in this position now where Astralis get to dictate the pace from the beginning of the map. And if, if Astralis are able to do what Fnatic couldn't in the first map, which is to actually win those early rounds, Again, the pressure is going to be immediately on top of Fnatic again, and their economy is immediately going to be uh, you know, weaker, and they won't be able to get as many orbs on JW, who's the only player who's playing really sick right now for Fnatic. So I'm definitely a bit worried for the Swedes. Uh, yeah, and uh, I'm, I was just seeing Carrigan lining up a smoke, which I'm not going to mention until we are into the match, which perhaps suggests some strategies that are going, we're going to see from them in this map. And this is, this is personally my favorite map in Counter-Strike at the moment, and there's so much you can do with it on both sides, so much aggression that can be had, and uh, so, such dynamic plays that can be had from taking mid on the T side, and then so many different reactions you can have on the CTs once mid has been lost in retakes and, and what, so, so on and so forth. So we'll have to see. We're about 25 seconds into the pistol round. Fnatic are going to be starting on the CT side of this map, Astralis on the T. So, uh, We'll have to see how prepared Astralis are for this map in particular and whether Fnatic can uh, dictate the pace while being on the CT side or if they'll play to the tune of Astralis' fiddle. Yeah, as long as we don't see any you know, really big mistakes from, uh, from Astralis that say, you know, sending loads of players alone on anti force buys and you know, stuff like that, then I think they should be fairly safe to have a, a, decent, a decent match here if everyone's on point, as we just saw. As you mentioned, Device is going to be really interesting how they actually enable him and if they decide to use him a lot. In, uh, or put, put the pressure on him to actually open up the rounds. You know, uh, typically, when uh, you know, moving into Astralis, when Device actually started to play really, really sick, is actually was a lot of it was because a lot of the players on the, on the team were actually taking pressure away from him as as a superstar player. And uh, you know, he's always capable of those performances, but he's not your he's not a guardian type author. Well, it's pistol time. Map two, make some noise, people! We've got instant boosts coming in here from Astralis, and what we saw Carrigan doing earlier was lining up a smoke which goes towards short. I do wonder if we could see that now. He is under the boost at the moment. We've got two boosted players here for Astralis. Make that three. So uh, Carrigan's not one of those players. We'll have to see what Astralis have in mind. Obviously, the CTs are going to have the range advantage. Carrigan lining up the pop flash, and we will see a mid take from the T's. Yep, all over the top there. Olaf Meister a bit smoked off. Got to be careful not to get too tanged through that smoke. And here goes the wrap onto the A site. The rotation's happening already for Fnatic. And Astralis not really on the site. Not really enough. And there's no bomb down either. This is actually really painful here for the Danes. They're going to be able to get the frags they need actually to get out of this hard spot right now because Fnatic are all over them. And there is a frag from Device onto Dennis. So it looks like Astralis might have the breathing room now to get the bomb down. But again, look at Olaf Meister. He's going to stop that straight away. Picks up a kill. Zipex 4. He had it, but he really doesn't. And now it's just. Two, uh, three players left here for Astralis. Olaf Meister up close. He is the only man that can really stop this now to allow Fnatic to win this round. What a tough spot here for Olaf Meister. 
Can he pull it off? Now he's lost his teammate, Flusher. It's all on him alone. One player goes down, but that's it. The free gonna, he's going to get the trade. And Astralis with a good pistol around there. Very, very chaotic on that A-bomb site. Astralis were in a really bad spot there at the beginning because you had Dennis coming in A-main on the flank. You had people on short and uh, from the car position from Fnatic. Dennis got taken down. And at the end, when there were two left, Flusher was stopping uh, the two Astralis players who were in main from crossing to help. I think it was Dupree who had less than 10 HP. But then uh, Flusher finally got taken down and Olaf Meis was left alone in a one versus three, which he was unable to overcome. Fnatic go for the force buy here. We've got all the pistols coming up. We've got armor on all the players as well. But they've got a semi, some semi-standard 2-1-2 setup on the CT side. So they won't be stacking anywhere. Smoke goes down towards the B-bomb side. Olaf Meis is going to push. Ooh, lots of spray coming in. And he's not on the uh, right end of that spray, unfortunately. He's standing on the box there. But uh, Astralis could hold for now. Starting to move into the A site where Crims has a Deagle. Could go for a shot through the door. Not going to make a connection though. And uh, Crims may need some help soon. Dennis goes down. And again, now it's Astralis going to be flanking the A site. Yeah, really nice anti force buy coming in from Astralis. Getting themselves onto that A bomb site. And uh, it's quite cool to see that everyone from Fnatic has the, uh, the CZ apart from Crims. He was on a Deagle. Of course, uh, Flusher very famously being godlike with that weapon, but uh, at the moment it looks like Olaf Meister, all he's going to get is actually a Mac 10 from one of the players from Astralis who was pushing him. And that is the reason, because he was an expendable player, only dropping that Mac 10. And uh, Astralis able to survive this round, but uh, considering that uh, Flusher and JW will keep their armor and CZs, and of course Olaf Meister as well, into the next round, he can obviously drop his CZ, keep the Mac 10. The next round will be dangerous too for, from Astralis, and they, they will realize this. So we might see even the same round run by them. Some polite applause for the bomb, the the bomb explosion there. I appreciate that crowd, very nice. So, Astralis, 2-0, two to the good so far. Not the best start for Fnatic on their CT side. No, it doesn't seem like they're going to buy around what they have in tow from the previous round. We'll see if they can get anything done with it. Perhaps one flashbang would be useful to uh, take part of the map, maybe into A main, maybe into B storage as they tried in the previous round. But no, they're going to go just as they were, basically. Three towards B, two towards A, and nobody over towards mid. You can see Astralis holding passively. There are three men looking towards B in case there's any crazy pushes from the CT side, but they're playing slowly for the time being. Smoke down to suggest the rotation, and indeed the full rotation's coming out towards A because of the smoke on the site. So uh, Carrigan may be the sacrificial lamb here. He has an MP7 though, so it might not taste very good. In the meantime, Astralis are very slowly moving towards B. Only Flusher has rotated back, so they're still at a strong advantage. Yeah, this is such a nice round from Astralis there, kind of forcing rotation into A when really, you know, pushing the B one side. So they're able to not only kind of figure out where the stack is, they're able to circumvent it and get a really fast bomb plant and beat a rotation. So once again, Astralis showing their class and, and how well they understand the game. Because, you know, there's a lot of teams that struggle to actually do what they just did very effortlessly, which was to play such a, a, a smart anti-force buy sort of round and deny a team like Fnatic any frags. That's a really big deal. Crims is dead, that. He died. So Flusher hasn't... Oh, that was oh. disgusting. He's so good at that season, he could get three! Oh, he just runs out of bullets. Is anyone better with the CZ? No. no. That was quite nice. Well, Fnatic are going to be on the buy now. Not going to have everything they would have wanted because of their force buy, so they'll be reasonably limited on the nade situation. They've got no defuse kit either. Four smoke grenades, which will be the key nades at the beginning of this round, trying to uh, stop Astralis from encroaching on their positions too fast. AWP early onto device after some successful initial rounds. He's headed over towards the B-bomb side at present. Has some teammates in for support as well. Got that uh, anti-aggression flashbang coming in. And it seems they're going to uh, smoke the front of the B-site, so Flusher has to move away from checkers, and they more or less take it for free. Yeah, get another execute probably lined up. This reminds me a little bit of the uh, G2 um, execute onto the B-bomb site if they were going to throw all the same grenades. It'd be really cool to see that. And there is, uh, there's the fires sent into the, the checkers area, and they're going to be smoking it off as well. So it is very similar to that one, but they aren't quite as coordinated, not really getting the frags in there as they approach Flusher and JW, able to hold things down, allowing time for Olofmeister to get himself in there through vent. Now the lurker, Zipex, is finding himself all alone for Astralis, and there's so many players to deal with. Three. You have the bomb 
under control over by the B-bomb site. So Astralis, that BXQ didn't really pan out very well. Perhaps a little bit, uh, could be a bit snappier on the execution of all those grenades, but also it did look like Fnatic knew exactly how to stop that. Now it's like damage limitation for Fnatic, because Apex has managed to get another one. The Flashbang comes in, slows things down, Dennis will finish things off. So an important early round for Fnatic to get, but surviving with two players, not great for the cash. Not much cash to splash. And again, they're going to have difficult nade situation as well. Again, the uh, smokes are going to be important. Oh, look at Stan. So we have three smoke grenades on the CT side. Flusher is just buying up now. We'll see what he opts to do with what little he has left. He's going to keep a little money in the bank, it seems. Oh, and he's picked up a smoke grenade as well. So again, the smoke grenades are going to be key. So early strat attempt from Astralis didn't really go to plan. We can see new plans in order here. Device looking to take the player over towards short. Oh, if he jumps there, that wouldn't be nice. This is tense. Just waiting for it. Device going fishing. Doesn't see anything and finally it gives it up. So what is the play going to be from Astralis? We've got two players in mid and only one towards B at the moment for Fnatic. Olaf Meister is going to be playing around Checkers since he hasn't been smoked off on this occasion. And this is, one, this is uh, maybe what I was talking about. Let's have a look at where these smokes are going from the boost position. We've got Flash being forced out of the uh, vents, which means Astralis are going to be able to take the mid area. JW trying to do something about it. You can see a short has indeed been smoked off, as we mentioned before, which means that the A site can be split without uh, much warning here for the CTs. Yeah, it goes straight through the smokes. We haven't seen this kind of play for a long time. Frag's going both sides at the moment, but it's just two players left now for Fnatic, and they've lost the bomb site. Carrigan is going to get the plant punching in those numbers. And here comes Olaf Meister up from highway with that AWP in hand. If they can get a fast kill here, it's very, very on. Olaf Meister flashed in close to Forklift. This is so difficult there for Olaf, and he's going to get caught in the side with a Tech-9 device in as well. And another good round from Astralis. That's a great execute, the kind of uh, passive opening into the, uh, the split on A with those really cool uh, highway smokes that we saw. Yeah, that smoke we first saw on a large scale from Renegade, actually. I think, yeah, I believe back so. When they, back when they were Vox, back in the days when they were Vox. So that sh short smoke come in. It has a number of uh, benefits. One is obviously the A players don't know. If there's nobody mid, the A players don't know if you're on short or not. They don't know if you're right next to them or not. If there's an AWPA towards quad, he can't shoot you. I mean, he can take pot shots, but he has no idea if he's actually going to hit someone or not. So uh, there are many benefits to that. And it gives a distinct lack of inf information for the Fnatic side. A side who has been reset now in terms of economy because they won a round after losing three and then lost the immediate following round. So as you can see, just pistols here for the CT side. Again, they haven't really stacked the sights here. Seem to be moving towards A, but there's a bit of un uncertainty. Olaf Meister going back towards B, seeing what's going on over there, but the rest of his teammates more or less towards A with JW holding super passive from CT spawn looking at Z connector. Yeah, Cajun B kind of just sitting there now. He's going to be really useful if he survives, but you know, to be honest, with just the, uh, the Kevlar, this pistoling players of Fnatic that are left alive. Astralis is still fine here, of course, going onto the A bomb site. But again, it's, it's a nice little setup. They, they win some early map control, get a guy up into the uh, highway position, then rotate everybody in for that A hit. So they're always keeping the coordination, they're always keeping players together, they're never making any of these fundamental mistakes for Fnatic to really capitalize on. And uh, Astralis now just able to get an extra couple of kills, it would seem. Device and Dupree finding those kills. Another thing about their execute in the previous round on the A site is that they put the smoke, I think they had a wall of smokes over towards the uh, car position. So there were just many points of isolation for the uh, CTs there. So they basically cancelled out a number of p potential crossfires as they pushed the site. So we'll see if they bring that back later on. The money is still awful for Fnatic. We've got an average of about 3,500. So it looks like it's going to be a double eco from the Swedish side. Indeed, and uh, it's also good too, you know, uh, those highway smokes because it puts a lot of pressure on the the, pl the guy who's playing mid rotation into into A, and of uh, oftentimes uh, JW even plays that position with a with an AWP, and he's been so on point. It's really cool to see them make sure that JW's the the prime under prime pressure in the beginning of the round. But just some quasis here, and Dennis, what is this? Can he get something else? They know where he is now. They're just rushing onto his position. The flames are there. He's actually missing that Molotov a little bit. Dennis still alive, getting pot shots off with the Deagle. Almost another kill coming in the nade. Oh, there it is, JW getting two. 
And now there's only two players left for Astralis. Bomb is picked up by Zipex, but he's got to ferry that over to a bomb site. And uh, things just got a little bit awkward here, James. They did indeed. Astralis became fixated on killing one player there, and it's cost him dearly. Whoa, Flush has taken one in the face. We're down to a two versus two. Now it's a question of uh, where these remaining players are and if they have picked up any weapons. In Astralis' favor is the fact that the AWP is actually stuck on top of the boost. And uh, Zipex can do a bit of information finding. You can see Cajun B has found one rifle over there. So they can uh, probably make the assumption that no rifles have been picked up by the remaining CTs. But where are they? Astralis have 45 seconds left to decide on which site to take. As you can see, there's one player per site here for Fnatic. And they're playing quite tricky positions, which are going to be hard for Astralis to discern. We might have a bit of a peak coming in. Crims has announced his position. But Astralis are going elsewhere. Yeah, here comes the play, and uh, Fnatic, I think, have already worked it out with their positions. Oh, JW trying to get the dig in there, but he can't quite find the shot that he needs. If he'd been able to make that a two versus one, this would have been very, very hard for uh, Astralis indeed. But in fact, uh, Crims will find his way onto an AK as he goes for the retake. Maybe he can get something done there. No Kevlar. He's going to have to get the headshot immediately. Also, the aim punch is going to be really annoying. Crims also has a grenade to work with, a smoke. He will toss that over to CT. Zipex on the site and KGB working his way around as well. This is going to be incredibly hard. They've got to go now. They don't have the kid either. Here comes the engagement, and that's Zipex with the first frag. He goes down to very low HP, but he lets KGB do the rest of the work. And Astralis pick up the round, but that was, again, very scary. I mean, Fnatic had no right to win that round. Five round lead for the Danish side now, looking to uh, take one of their few victories over the best team in the world, JW. Well, Olaf Meister, in fact, is going to be picking up the AWP, and it is, after all, going to be double AWP for the CT side. We may see uh, Fnatic going into painkiller mode here, pinning some Danish players to the wall. We've got JW going over towards the B bomb site. Olaf Meister currently in mid, instantly smoked off, though. Nice smoke from CT spawn. Only Krim is over towards the A site at the moment. A main has also been smoked, but Astralis looks to be playing a fast A. We see. Uh, Crim's playing around the smoke now, and Olaf Meister's has come in through the smoke to take down Device. There to go Dupree as well, and Carrigan. We've got a three-man here from Olaf Meister. Can he get any more? Spray down from Zipex to open up the A bomb site, but there are still CTs to deal with. He's alone now. The rest of his team have fallen. The bombs on the floor as well, and he, he may get double peaked here. Down goes JW, runs out of bullets, and then it's finally put a stop to the madness. Both orbs will be saved by Fnatic, but another expensive round. It's nice to see Olaf Meister finally just coming in with a big, big play there. Hugely impactful, those frags. And hopefully we'll get a replay of that later on. But uh, Astralis still up 6-2, to two and um, Fnatic really need the momentum here. They really need to get that, uh, that round where they just break the money of Astralis so they can get some, uh, get some eco round wins as well. But uh, it's cool to see that the double up has come into play too. It's a really, um, really heavy-hitting play style, of course. And all this, this strategy here from Fnatic Fast play into B storage. Wow, they're going to find all of Astralis there, and they were ready for it. This is really bad right now. Judo has been delivering great results so far, but he's got to do something very special to save this round here for Fnatic. They are under so much right now. Here he is still. He's lurking around. We'll have to see if his teammates can give him a good spot here. Oh, JW's going to stop the plant from going down. There's still a play. He's just spotted the voice. Oh, what? what is this? JW, amazing shot, spinning around to find it. But Crimson's against three. What on earth will he do with the bomb down on the bomb site? And there are nades here to cover the approach to that bomb. And Cajun B, you know what? He's going to make it simple for Crimson. He's just going to kill him outright. JW, man, this guy is trying everything to save Fnatic. You can really see that uh, Fnatic guys are getting rather deflated at this point. That is insane. 180 with the AWP. He was in a situation at Run That Smoke where he's probably going to get one frag and get traded. Slows the bomb plant as well. That was absolutely insane play, but it wasn't enough. Fnatic back on the force by now. Nothing in the bank. Four CZs, the Deagle onto Flusher. Few smokes, few flashes, and that's it. Astralis coming full force, say for Cajun B who has an MP7, and that might get in a lot of work here because only two of the five players have helmets on the Fnatic side, which means one shot to the head and dead. Yeah, again, you know, keeping, keeping to a very fast round for their anti-force buy is Astralis executing in, using the grenades. This is what you want to see, good discipline, but uh, can Fnatic get, just get some good shots to stop it, to stifle this play? 
Agent B will actually go down to JW. JW doing even more damage to Dupree there. Flushers also there with the Beagle. This could actually work out for Fnatic, but the shots just aren't connecting for them. Astralis running all over the bomb site at the moment. And Olaf Meister, this is a hard angle with just a CZ. He does have uh, Crims working his way around, but two versus four. They're just really hoping at getting some frags here. Oh, Crims almost, almost got a full wall bang onto one of these players with the CZ, but that's, he's not going to do much more. He shot Dupree down to 17 HP through the wall. The CZ didn't know had that much power in that spot. But there we go. What more can he do here? He doesn't have a kit, so it's going to be hard for any ninja to go on. And he's running out of bullets as well, but seems he wants some engagement here. He's got Zipex and Device just waiting for him. Getting some nice damage on, but they still can't uh, put him out of his misery here. Device looking for it, but I think it might be time to exit. Crims just wants, he's like, please, guys, die with me. Guys! So another round for Astralis, and uh, obviously, a Fnatic just, they couldn't be in a worse spot because. Obviously, you know, they win around, they get reset. Have to force buy, then eco, then buy. They win around up with the buy, then they get reset. That's happened. This is the second time that's happened now. And we're going to go into that spot where they have to go for the full eco Damn. so they can buy in the following rounds. So all these players have around $2,000 at the moment. There is a tactical timeout coming in from uh, Fnatic. They all, all the CTs right now have about $2,000. And Olaf Meister has bought an MP7. Did he actually buy the MP7? What? He has an MP7. That is. He has two. He has an MP7 and two hundred and fifty dollars, <sighs> and uh, no Kevlar. That seems like a, mis a mistake, like a you know pressing pressing a bind that you, you know auto buy or something. Because this is this is a problem. This is a big problem. It's a big problem because the the team basically ecos now and then full buys next round, and they're in a spot where it, now he's. Kind of, I mean, the team are, they can't they can't buy with him. I mean, it's, it's not really like one of the players can afford to buy armor to play with the, with the MP7. No. He, pr he pretty much has to play MP7 no armor because they're already six rounds and they have, they have two rounds on a CT side of cash on their pick when they're a game down. I mean, the best hope is, is to, to do some kind of aggressive play, be able to kind of pick up a weapon, get a kill on an isolated player, pick up a weapon and try to save it or something to make good of that into the next round. But to be honest, it's very unlikely we're going to see that because Astralis are playing their anti-force by so incredibly well and anti-eco so incredibly well, you know, they never leave a player isolated to, to be abused like that. So I would be surprised if Astralis would, would let that up much. Though that was, there was that one round with the Eagles where it got a little bit awkward, but that's really it. They still won that round. You saw on camera that Crims earlier on was perhaps a bit frustrated. He hasn't yeah. got any kills yet, Dan. Has he not? He doesn't have any kills. He has. He actually, you're right. He has zero kills right now. So there are there are problems in the Fnatic camp, and they are running out of opportunities. Yeah, and this is that spot where you. This is if, if there is ever a time to draw on your experience that they have had of, you know, that they are the world's best team. That is. This is the moment where you have to pull everything out of yourself, all, all that spirit, you know, where you know deep down inside. That you, that you are the best. That needs to happen right now because they've got so many situations that haven't been going their way, so many spots where they haven't been hit, you know, hitting their shots in the game. There's nothing that gives, can give them confidence. The confidence has to come from their experience right now. Well, we've got Olaf Meister with an MP7 versus Astralis. That is essentially <laughs> the situation in this round. And no Kevlar as well. That's, uh, that is awful. So he, actually, Olaf Meister has quite a good spawn for B, so it's, it's possible that he just tries to rush with it because I don't know what else he's going to do. He's moving towards the box at present. There is nobody really headed towards B. I think uh, Carrigan might be lurking towards there, but it seems like it's going to be a fast mid-take from Astralis. And again, you can see this, this spot. Astralis hasn't really isolated any of their players to really be picked off, and, and uh, they're moving together as a unit. There are two players in mid here, and uh, three making their way for this split onto A. Cajun B actually not finding too much love with his MP7 at the moment. Guess Dane's going to throw it uh, right away to Dupree, who's got, <laughs> got an AK-47. Don't think Dupree wants that, but uh, there you go. So over, over towards the B bomb site, you had Flusher baiting for Olaf Meister, just uh, shuffling around. But nothing's nothing's going on over there, unfortunately. So uh, they're going to have B forced to rotate. Oh. Olaf Meister, he's made a little bit of money. Maybe he can make some more and uh, get a refund on his miss by. He seems to have lost his receipt down. The funny thing is that of all the players to kill, he kills the only one who has an MP7, which is what he has. <laughs> so he can't even upgrade from that, James. It's, it's a, even it's a cruel world, Dan. It is indeed a cruel world. So Olaf Meister is now rotating towards a main where Carrigan is waiting. He has the angle as well. Ooh, Olaf Meister does a reasonable amount of damage. Maybe his teammates can follow up. Flush has picked up the MP7, so it's a bit of pass the parcel here for Fnatic with that MP7. Doesn't even have a skin, Dan. And nope, it does not. 
And you can see again, the Stroll is just really sticking together. This Just make sure there's no way the Fnatic can get anything. They know that they have the psychological edge, so they are making everything incredibly difficult for Fnatic. That said, Flush is actually going to pick up an extra kill with the uh, MP7 there, so... Well, we're going to have to... What we'll likely see is... Uh, Flash is sticking onto a CZ or something, and he'll drop something for Olaf Meyer. So it's probably what's going to happen because usually that's like Flash is. So I mean, again, as you said it, you know, Flash is likely the best CZ player in the world, and uh, he's so comfortable in playing with that weapon. And it seems like it'd be more beneficial to have Olaf on on a on a real weapon. But it looks like uh, for now, Olaf is going to be sticking to the CZ instead. Astralis seems to have a Fnatic's number. JW tried to go for a sneaky uh, kill by going through A-Main just before the bomb goes off, and Device was waiting for him to do it. This orbed him immediately. So, Fnatic have what they can, what they can afford here, which is, you know, Olaf Meister again down to the Caesar due to the uh, MP7, which made a cameo appearance in the previous round. Seven round lead for Astralis on the less favored side of cash, if you will. Fnatic again with only two rounds on the board, and they are an entire game down. The tournament life is at stake here. We've still got Crims on zero kills at the moment, and he's playing on the A site. And if Crims is not getting any kills on the A site, then there are, there are serious problems in the Fnatic camp. Yeah, they really are. And uh, Astralis know that the money is stretched for Fnatic, so they're just playing a very slow round uh, to begin with. Putting a bit of presence and pressure here or there just to bait out some of the early grenades. And as we can see, you know, it's, it's working. Fnatic are down to a very, very small stock of grenades. And that's going to make any push that Astralis does much stronger because the counter grenades won't be there. So we can see that uh, you know, Fnatic are getting some ideas here, going for a bit of a play. And that's quite smart to try to be proactive in this situation. Because how else do they level out the disadvantages? And look at that, the Thor bursts open. And out comes four frags for Astralis. Make that five. Holy potatoes. In the space of three seconds, Astralis wipe out Fnatic. <laughs> My god, James. This is... Uh, this is not safe for work. That is a face of pressure. The most anyone has on the Fnatic in terms of their scoreboard is uh, seven oh. kills at the moment. Oh, oh he's, he's had to, too much to drink. Get him out. He's getting a bit leery. Could be dangerous. Fnatic gone for the fourth buy again. This looks like a sad tale, Dan. We've got Dennis with the FAMAS. The rest of the team, CZ, CZ galore. Astralis' initial setup is going to be towards A. The bomb's still in T spawn. The Vice holding very far back, trying to uh, make use of the fall off damage of their weapons as he is standing there with an AWP. Can actually hold that same angle all the way from T spawn, standing on the uh, sign, which is quite good to annoy people as well. We've got JW getting a bit cheeky in T warehouse, actually. He spots Cajun B, and he's going to get tagged but make his escape. Not much information to report to his team. We're on fourth spy, and Astralis are waiting for us, is all he can really say at this point. Yep. And uh, usually, you know, we're, we're seeing Astralis go for something like a delayed mid take in rounds like this when the time starts to run too low. They'll start to say, okay, it's, uh, we, we've waited for the aggression. Now it's time to take some uh, bits of map control. And they indeed, are literally boosting right now. Indeed, they're going to go for that uh, map control over towards middle. And then they can set up either a B or an A play. Of course, there is presence already towards A main and uh, Dora and so on for them. So. It's likely they're going to pick that. And uh, there's three players there for Fnatic. So Fnatic, they just need to hit the shots. That's what they're going for right now. Olaf Weiss will be challenged. He's going to drop down one, but that's it. What else can his teammates do? Dennis is the only man with a rifle. And in goes Astralis. Straight into Dennis's arms. Oh my god. Zipix completely blind. Picks up two kills. And now it is down to Flusher, who gets smacked down by Dupree. It seems as though nothing can go the way of Fnatic here today. Harrigan enjoying the feel from the crowd here. It seems like the crowd are behind Astralis and he is getting supercharged. Nine round lead for Astralis and they are a game up. Fnatic have two rounds on their CT side. This is beyond disaster, Dan. I never this is, this is almost a human tragedy. Again, the force comes out. Force after force. Fnatic have two rounds left to try and win in the first half. We've got the UMP coming out, which is almost famous at this point in this tournament. Onto Olaf Meister, flush out down to the Deagle. Reasonable amount of nades. Two kits as well for the CT side. Astralis once again moving towards main with two people. We've got Zipix. He's going to be the harassment man towards Squeaky. Pop flash coming in from Carrigan. We might see a fast play here. Here he comes. Crimson with the first frag there on the defense. Astralis just charging through them, though. Crimson down to 5 HP, pulls out the pistol. Might spot Dupree, can't hit the shot in time, though. And in comes some additional grenades to try to make the take of the side a little bit easier. But there are still Fnatic players on this bomb site. There is still hope for Fnatic to pick up this round, but it will be difficult. In comes Cajun B now. 
And it looks like Astralis are ready to go for it. The coordination's there. Cajun takes down Dennis. Wow. Dre comes in. The UMP's good. But still, Astralis, they can't get in here. And the bomb is now in control of Fnatic. So this is going to be a tough one. The, the bomb is currently in the Bermuda Triangle, Dan. And Astralis with a man disadvantage. I don't know how they are going to get in here. Well, that's a good start. Ooh, JW's been spotted on the highway as well. Gone to the high ground. And with 40 seconds left on the clock, it seems that Zipex is going to go for a different approach. Speak of a different approach, this is longest rotation NA, as we have uh, Cajun B going all the way through the B bomb site. So JW's flank is about to get flanked. Oh my god, there's no way you'd ever think that anyone would do this. Oh my god, that's got to suck for JW. From the back. And now Olofmeister is in a position where, I mean, Fnatic, they need rounds right now. There's not many left for them to get. Olofmeister, he's got to get it done, but he can't. This is the shot. It was a tough shot, but Cajun B is on point. Four frags in that round. Cajun really delivers. And I've got to say, you know, Dupree, speaking of players delivering, you know, Dupree has been on point this map. He's, he's uh, top frag, 18 frags for him. Sharp as the butcher's pencil, Dan. And the last map as well, Dupree was, was uh, also the top frag. He's also just having a really good game. Not much talking going on in the Fnatic camp at the moment. And again, this is uh, last chance saloon in the first half. 12 to 2. Astralis are running away with this game, with this match. Down goes Dennis. Oh, nice shot by Flusher, though. He's going to paint the walls with Carrigan's blood. With that Deagle, as KGB tries to take control of middle for Astralis. So, you know, one man for each team. Now it's going to be KGB removing an extra one from Fnatic. JW, does he have. Is he going to have the audacity to try to push, push there? Looks like he's just going to hold for the time being, which is smart. And uh, Fnatic, down a man. The bomb could go anywhere at this point, James. Anywhere at all. So, Crims on the A bomb site alone, who has one frag in this half so far, has four players looking to impose their will upon him. Got a teammate coming in for support. The teammate's gone down, and Crims is in a crossfire. JW goes down, down goes Crims as well. Everyone's going down. 13 to 2. Bet uh, you never saw this coming. Uh, yeah, all Fnatic can be thinking right now is surely like not like this. Because this, I mean, what is happening? They're just getting completely wrecked. They're getting savaged, James. That was a very nice pick by device. When you have a really forward T spawn on the T side of uh, Cash, Normally, people will go for a peek through mid. So if a CT tries to go from Z connector to highway, you can shoot them before they can cross. It's not a safe cross, but uh, people can also try and get close to the vent fast, and device will punish them for doing so. The only thing I've got to say is that Astralis have to make sure that in their minds, it's not over till it's over. Because as soon as, soon as you start Dan, getting complacent... Dan, Dan, Dan. Welcome to America, CSGO. <laughs> One minute on the clock here for Fnatic to retain their composure. Again, they have two rounds on the board. It's not good. In fact, it's terrible, Dan. But uh, yep. it's not impossible. It all starts with the pistol round. Yep. It all starts with, uh, I mean, again, like I said, if, if Astralis gets complacent, if they get into that mindset where you think, I've won the game already when you're having too much fun, and, and that's, that's when a team can come back. And, uh, you know, everyone's been there, everyone's done that in their professional careers. So, you know, hopefully Astralis have the experience not to let it happen. Um, they, they obviously have, a, have, have had in the past a reputation for throwing games away, which they should definitely win. You know, maybe getting into their own head, but I, they look so damn confident right now. It's hard to see that from happening, see that happening, especially, they, they just need three rounds, James. If they win the pistol, it's over. That giraffe looked like it was checked by Valve with the rubber glove, Dan. Looks well, because, of it, because of the expression looks on Looks a bit frail over there. Well, right. it's crunch time. 15 seconds until uh, the final test is laid at the feet of Fnatic. We've got four players on the T side buying Kevlar. JW is yet to buy. The entire Astralis team has opted for Kevlar here. And the odd decoy here and there. JW will join him. So we've got 10 players with Kevlar. It is going to be a war of attrition, Dan, and Fnatic's life depends on it. 
Yeah, I'm just I'm taking a deep breath here right now because this this match could be over in a blink of an eye at this point. Nice little push there coming from Astralis. This is actually really nice because you know in some of the, the meta recently there's been more and more door pushing. So this definitely eliminates some possibilities for Astralis as to what Fnatic might be doing. But Fnatic just keeping it chill at the moment. But will they expect such a play? Crims is outside of Tea Warehouse with the bomb, which is going to be really awkward now. He's going to need the help of JW. And the CTs have the range advantage, as we know with these USPs. So it's going to be really hard to get back into this. Down goes one Fnatic player. Down goes two. Down goes three. Carrigan goes down for the Australia side, but it's four versus two. And the bomb is on the floor at the moment, finally getting picked up. But there's still a Zipex there to try and do something about it. He's going to be taken down by Flusher, but Flush is the only man standing between Astralis and Sure defeat. Flasher sitting there by door, 24 points of health. He can't even really take any shots to the torso. I mean, this, he's going to have to find three headshots. There's three players for Astralis. They all have maximum HP, pretty but much. Dupree is oh, waiting. God. And Dupree will strike just as Flusher gets the knife out. Not the start that Fnatic wanted, not the start they deserved, but it was what Astralis willed upon them. The Force Buy, of course, coming out from Fnatic, the Tech Nines. Going to be a bit more dangerous than the Glocks. What is the uh, buy of Astralis here? We've got a FAMAS, an M4, another FAMAS, and two SMGs. Lots of HEs. So if uh, Fnatic go for a fast play towards A, for example, they may find themselves getting naded into oblivion. We have four players from Fnatic rushing towards the B bomb site, and we've got three from Astralis. If the HEs come in here, this could be... Very bad indeed. Pop flash. That's right. It's not going to even wait for Fnatic. There's a massive flash coming in and they're all getting slaughtered. Are we going to be going to match point, Dan? There's two players left. JW can't escape. That's a bomb down as well. Flusher, he's picked up a UMP and he's got a smoke. And he's against four players. Oh. The 1D comes in, but he's going to need more where those are coming from. Flusher is down. And what a read from Astralis. Just going straight for the straight up B play. And they just meet all of Fnatic. And look, they're just there. They think this is hilarious. They yes. are lolling, Dan. They find it hysterical. 13 match points for Astralis. Let me repeat that. There are 13 match points for Astralis. There is surely no way they can mess this up, James. <laughs> Fnatic have five pistols, a hope and a prayer. We have Zonic going nuts in the background, hyping his team up, and the timeout comes in, Dan. Yeah, this is so rough. I mean, obviously, Fnatic just... It's wait, 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 so wait, crazy, wait, 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 wait. The, the timeout has come in from the CTs. Seriously, that's a bit interesting. Because you would expect there is, a, there is a CT timeout at match point with 13 in the hole, that's, 12 in that, the hole. James, that's pretty BM. This, I gotta say. Well, it depends. <laughs> if, it, if it's confirmed tactical timeout, then that that is interesting. But let's see. Maybe it's a technical one. Because you're in a spot. Let's say it's not. Let's say it is a is a tactical timeout. You're in a spot where you already have all the momentum and the good emotions. You just crush. You just crush that play. So in, uh, in, in fairness, Fnatic are still the best team in the world. And they're on the force buy. So, there is, so perhaps there is a discussion to be had. The one thing I'll say about this series, though, is that I don't think we've really seen Fnatic in a, in a spot where they've ever really had any momentum. They, they've always just been getting reset immediately. And if they were playing the CT side, they've, they've never had economy. Just That was the story of, of overpass just all the way. And it was the story of the first half of this match all the way. Fnatic have just been up against the most, the, the biggest obstacles you can possibly be against in this, in this game. So. Stroll is definitely in a really sick position here. They can just do anything. You have to wonder if Fnatic have given up. No. Do they ever give up? No. I mean, you can't help but feel dejected in the situation, but there's still, there is still something you, to you be done. You can feel down, but there's not out. Always, there's always a chance. There is always a chance. Yeah, Fnatic are, are five championship quality caliber players. And they, ne they will never give up, but I can definitely see that they're feeling pretty dejected indeed. Pretty deflated. Trying to understand how they can possibly come back into this. That's one man with pressure. He is one for 16 on this map. That is very insane. For, for Cr Crims is typically the rock, the foundation of the team. He is. He's, he's like a one-man Gatling gun. So it is, it is quite, uh, quite troubling indeed that he's not been getting the frags. All too many times we have seen him with fantastic performances, multi-frags over towards the A sites. But today is perhaps not the day. So Fnatic on what could be their final challenge to Astralis, who are at match point here. Got a fast smoke into mid. Olaf Mice has been boosted up. We have Device playing it from the sandbag. So Astralis not going to put anybody close towards mid. 
Wolfmeister sees the vice there. There is a Molotov on to flush, so they could try and flush him out. But they're not going to commit to mid for the time being. There is a boost coming into the vent from the CTs to give their teammate some support. KGB with the MP7 here. Yeah, there's a smoke for KJ just to keep the uh, channel closed for the time being for Fnatic. As Fnatic keep trying to pressure, but again, the weapon disadvantage is going to be hard to overcome. And Dupree's position is really sick. He's going to try to go for the first frag. It's Flusher, though. Then we'll get it. And he's going to spot all the information as well, will Dupree, for Astralis. So Astralis already rotating players, but can Cajun be hang on? He gets dinked, and then he gets flanked. This is looking good for Fnatic. Maybe we'll see a round from them. Four, uh, four versus two. Trade will be very low. He's picked up the rifle, and the bomb will be planted as well. Fnatic are up against so much adversity at this point in time. Carrigan's going in from up top, seeing what he can get find right now. It is Crimson's head. He's going to pick off with that FAMAS. But thanks to Flusher and Dennis, the round will be closed out for Fnatic. They pick up one. It's a long road. This is like some Lord of the Rings style journey right here, James. Indeed, it is. Uh, they are definitely climbing the mountain with their bare hands, Dan. So there is a game in it yet. Astralis going to be on the eco. Karakun's picked up some Kevlar and a Deagle. Other than that, not much going on on the CT side. We'll see if their approach to the ecos will be different to that of Fnatic when they were on the CT side. But again, it seems a bit standard here. So we've got a 1-2-2 two, two set up. 1-A. Karakun looks like he's going to rotate between mid and A. And then two over towards the B bomb site. Fnatic moving quickly to take control of A main. Many nades close towards forklift in case there, there was any uh, pop flash shenan shenanigans coming in from the CT side, but there won't be. Carrigan will be the first to go, and he was the one who had uh, the most equipment. There we go, trying to pick up the Deagle device will get punished with the MP7. Some good money for Holofmeister. Holofmeister will go down in the end, though, and uh, his teammates do need to get onto that bomb site. However, they have spotted... Oh, no! Flush it gets caught off guard by Dupree with the silenced USP. Although there is still a very strong prospect to take this A bomb side away. And there you go, JW popping heads. Dupree with that newfound AK. This is too much damage, and Fnatic know it. They can't afford to lose so many players. They really need every round, though. Let's see if Dupree can steal it away. And he won't be able to do so. It's going to be Dennis to shut him down. Four rounds to 15. Fnatic losing three players there. And uh, with their money as it is, they're going to be buying two within zero dollars, I suppose, on, on most of these players. And uh, Astralis with uh, not really enough money to, to field a buy. And Astralis, you know, with 15 rounds, they only need one. They're going to try to basically find a way to maximize the amount of buy rounds that they have. So we're not going to see any weird force ups from them, I don't think. Look at Although that. quadruple nade, this will be interesting. Double AWP from Fnatic straight off the bat. No messing around, going for the big guns, quite literally. Astralis going for a four-man stack towards A, with Dupree holding an angle towards the car. Can he be the man to run distraction while his team cause a bit of mayhem, a bit of bedlam? Another question is, will Fnatic do play the uh, information game? I think JW spotted at least two plays. I've no idea how he missed those shots, but he's got the information for his team that B's probably open, moving quickly into B, R Fnatic. Yeah, there's still, uh, well, actually they use all the HE grenades, so there's not really a chance, I don't think, for them to get into this bomb site. With, uh, with those smokes down from Fnatic. So Fnatic should be pretty safe here. The only thing they have to worry about is the uh, a safe exit plan. Although that said, Device is going to find a wall bang onto JW through the, the metal shutter there. Which is really annoying, actually, for Fnatic. Otherwise, he's going to be careful he doesn't get dropped in on by Zipex there. This is a very scary indeed. Crims will take down Dupree. And he gets KGB. So some frags finally going the way of Crims, even if they are against the Eco. But Device. Nailing Crims to the wall. In comes Dennis now to finish off Device. And there you go. Five rounds for Fnatic. Finally stringing some together. But now they've got to do it against the buy. So we can see this uh, Deagle spam here. JW taking it straight to the waist. Very nice play by Device. So 10 rounds between Fnatic and Astralis at the moment. Fnatic will have full nades and Astralis are on the buy. We have three orps on the server at present, one of which is on device. So let's have a look at the initial setup of both teams. Fnatic looking to go towards mid or A. And again, it's a 1 2 2 setup. Zipex just putting a smoke down towards A main to uh, slow any initial pushes from Fnatic, who have Olaf Meister boosted. Very nice peak. Sees device, but maybe oh, just a little bit inaccurate there. Very close, and it looks like Fnatic are going to be trying to get their way in on some pressure on the A bomb site. 
And uh, Astralis really have no idea what's going on right now because they've abandoned middle, so they have got no information. There could be Fnatic players in middle for all they know. There could be uh, Fnatic trying to set up a B split. There's some pressure in here. So Carrigan looking to get a quick pop flash in there in case anybody was walking into the smoke. And uh, of course we can see JW there trying to find the entry. Try to kick off the round for Fnatic. And there could be, of course, flank potential here. Cajun B in T warehouse now. Oh, Dupree's in T spawn. Oh dear. And Olaf Meister still on the booze, and he's going to get taken down, which means Fnatic have to move fast. They have no choice anymore. Moving on to the site, but Carrigan still towards Forklift. Both going to go down to Pex and Carrigan. Great start for the T's. Flush is going to get taken down, and that's the bomb towards Forklift. It needs to cross to the site. The smoke's going to help. But again, we've still got the flank in Squeaky from Dupree. So it's a three-pronged assault from Astralis. And there we go. Crims gets taken down. It's JW left. It's match point for Astralis. JW needs to clutch. We've seen it before. We need to see it again. He needs to play out of his skin for his team to survive here. But there's too many angles. Too many Astralis players. Zero to two. Fnatic go. Astralis move on. So a shocking two map sweep coming out from Astralis. This was a result that no one expected. Some may have expected Astralis would defeat Fnatic here today at the Major to end their run, but no one would have predicted it to be in a fashion such as that. The first million dollar Major, they know, well, we all know that they wanted their names on top of that title, on top of that trophy, but it's not going to be the case on this occasion. And perhaps Astralis have finally extinguished what has been demon to them in a very recent memory. Again, they've lost about 13 of the last 15 times they've played Fnatic. So, Although, and that's a very strong performance as well. There's one big point here, though, that does change things slightly. Normally, if Astralis would be in the position to play Fnatic, it would be for the trophy. But in this, in this tournament, it only gets more difficult along the way. They're still going to have to defeat the likes of Na'Vi. They're still going to have to defeat the likes of potentially Luminosity, depending on how Luminosity do. So this, there is still a long way for Astralis to go to claim the trophy, and that is something that has been elusive to them in their careers so far. They will indeed be facing a yet stiffer test as they move forward with this tournament. And unfortunately for Fnatic, their run is over on this occasion. They've got the Man Khan behind them as well. They can uh, go and review the demos and see what went wrong. But what went right for Astralis, they were playing extremely strong. And maybe we can find out some more. Thanks to Red Eye on the stage with the team. Thank you very much, yes. Uh, with Carrigan, congratulations on an absolutely incredible second map. Let's talk about the first map a bit as well. In control all the way through, 10-5 up, everything's going fine. What are you talking about in the team? Uh, I was quite surprised that we get to play all pass. Um, I think they beat us too because they lost to Liquid and Fnatic is kind of team that lose confidence in one map, they just beat the rest of the tournament. So I'm quite surprised that we got to play Opas and very happy actually also to start CT side on Opas. So everything went out after our book. Second map, 15 2, 13 match points against arguably the best team in the world, as everyone probably keeps reminding you, and you're sick of hearing now. And you take a timeout, talk me through it. First of all, we took the time just to calm down our nerves, like we are in front and just to think about how to do. And second of all, we heard Fnatic into you saying they don't fear us and they also have easy game against us. So they had two minutes to think about, uh, to respect us as opponents, and that's why we took the time out. Oh, wow. Okay. I... Fair play to you. I... Yeah, that's the way it goes down. I mean, yeah, that's been a bit of needle between the two. How good does it feel to have beaten such a great team? Because they are a great team. Yeah, I think, I think Fnatic is the best team in the world. They won six out of six tournaments. There's nothing to argue about. But I think when the confidence start hitting uh, Fnatic, like the loss against Liquid, they seem suddenly beatable. And, and that's what we just used today. And we hit our A game today. And when we hit our A game, we just can beat everyone. So we just have to hit our A game tomorrow again in the semi-final because we're going to face Na'Vi and that's going to be a hell of a match like always. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. It's a tough road, probably the toughest I think anyone has faced. I mean, either of you get through, you're going to play Na'Vi. They were runners-up last time. Just how hard is that as a run-through? Does that bother you? 
I think actually it's easier for us to have a harder bracket because last time people said, okay, they have an easy road to the final and we lost 2-0 against NIP directly in the quarterfinals. So this time nobody thinks that we're going to the final. So now it's now it's time to, to show tomorrow why they need to be in the final. So we are the underdog tomorrow again. All right, well, very best of luck and congratulations. Astralis are through to the semi-finals. They'll play Na'Vi tomorrow. And don't forget, we've still got one very big match left here at the MLG Majors.